There are three easy steps in creating your resume link. Let me show you how. Step 1. Register. Go to www.jobs180.com using any browser and click register now. Fill out all the information needed. In choosing your resume link, use your full name so that it looks professional and it's easy to recall by potential employers. For example, Antonio Juan de la Cruz at jobs180.com Step 2. Create and Design When creating your resume, make sure to complete your personal information and upload your profile picture. One of the highlights of the resume link is the portfolio section. In the portfolio section, you can show off your skills by uploading samples of your work like documents, pictures, videos, and your social media links. Your resume link also features different themes and you can upload a cover photo. This is a combination of a cover letter and a social network cover photo. Here is an example. You can also download a copy of your resume link and print it. Step 3. Apply for a job. There are many ways to apply with your resume link. First is browsing the job recommendations in your Jobs180 dashboard. If you are qualified, click Submit Resume Link. So what are you waiting for? Dress up your next generation resume, stand out brightly among the competitive job seekers in the market, and win the heart of your future employers using Resume Link. Alright, so good morning everyone. Um, welcome to Jobs180.com's Marketing Me Live at Bataan Peninsula State University. So today we will be joined by speakers from Jobs180.com, Ernst and Young, Pakset, Dole, Peso, and Tisesa. So before we start, may we invite everybody for a short prayer followed by the singing of the National Anthem and DTSD hit. Oh God, creator of the heaven and the universe, you are worthy of our praises. In you alone, we pray and submit to ourselves, for we are nothing without you. We humbly ask for your forgiveness and mercy. Dear Lord, we gather here today with the intent of doing good in thy name. Guide us the right path. May our efforts be blessed with insights, understanding, wisdom and respect for all. May our deep faith in you give us strength to act honestly and well in all matters before us. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Oh, 
Okay, so again, welcome everyone. You ready na ba kayo? By the way, my name is Joyce from Jobs180.com and I will be your today's host and we are live guys via Jobs180 Facebook and Jobs180 YouTube page. So we hope that everybody is excited to learn new things today. Okay, so okay, so to officially start today's session, may we invite Dr. Gregorio J. Rodis, the University President, for the opening or launching remarks. I wish to congratulate the Office of Student Affairs and uh, the Placement Office for uh, uh, doing this uh, very important uh, activity. The, ide the idea of E2E or employment to employment is not a newly infused idea to state universities and colleges. Schools like the Bataan Peninsula State University must ensure that their graduates contribute societal impact through employment. Good morning, everyone. I would like to warmly welcome you all to the pre-employment preparation or pep talk spearheaded by the University Placement Office under the Office of Student Affairs and Services. We all know that education sector's responsibility to its students and their obligation to the community does not end 
with the graduation rites. After that momentous events is the real life battle as we traverse the intricate route of the modern world. The emphasis on the importance of education becomes louder, but education is not only about the degree or the diploma or awards and recognitions. It is about our impact to others and to the community as a whole. While it is of prime importance that universities and colleges ensure that they contribute to regional and national development through the provision of quality education, it is also equally vital that they build partnership and collaboration with the industries to strengthen linkages and secure employment opportunities for their students. Hence, I would like to congratulate the Office of Student Affairs and Services Placement Office for organizing this event. We must take our part in building a stronger community. Thank you at mabuhay kayo. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Gregorio Rodis, the University President. And now, to give us some motivational remarks, may we call on Dr. Emmanuel Simakaraeg, Vice President for Academic Affairs. To all the officials of the university, headed by our University President, Dr. Gregorio J. Rodis, to our partners from the industry, to the initiator of this event, the Placement Office, headed by Ms. Hazel Elia, to the Student Affairs and Services, led by Dr. Ronel D. De La Rosa, to our students, alumni, and other stakeholders present in this virtual event. Ladies and gentlemen, good day. For almost two years now, the world has been shaken by the COVID-19 pandemic. Our lives were significantly affected and consequently changed. The way of doing things evolved, like what we're doing now, we're seeing each other and pulling off this event virtually. The pre-pandemic life was not that easy. The unemployment rate still seems to be our utmost concern. As COVID-19 infection raged to its fullest, disruptions in all our businesses were experienced, resulting in recession and displacement of our workers. But we are Filipinos. We are resilient. And I'm very elated to see that we are slowly embracing the new normal. Businesses are likewise going back to their shape and people are starting to live with a pandemic with strict health protocols in mind and heart. May this event allow us to gainfully employ and secure a livelihood for our family. This is not just providing job opportunities, but ushering us to a new beginning with high hopes and strong faith in God. Good luck to all of you. Keep safe and have a blessed Christmas and a bountiful New Year. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Emmanuel Makaraeg, uh, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Okay, so as usual for our audience today, please comment your name, guys, your name, your year, and your course. Again, please comment your name, your year, and your course. And if you have questions later on, please type them in so we can answer them after the talk, okay? So don't forget to tag and share this to your friends too. So kung wala pa sila dito, tawagin nyo na kasi nakakapanghinayang naman if mamimiss nila itong opportunity na to. Diba? So this is once in a lifetime, so might grab the opportunity. Okay? So here's, here is our schedule for today. So we have the online application and interview tips which will be discussed by jobs180.com. We also have um, rerouting career plan um, by Faxit and we have top skills employers look for by Ernst and Young. And we also have compensation and benefits from Dole and employment programs and services from Peso and labor market outlook from Peso. Again, shout out to everyone who is here na again, please comment your name, your year, and your course. Again, please comment your name, your year, and your course. And as we go along, type in your question so we can read it later. Okay? So sabi ko nga, wag kayong mahiya, guys. This is your chance to ask before you face the real adulting thing or the world of work. Okay? So, kilalanin na po natin ang ating unang speaker. 
Okay, so our first speaker who will talk about online applications and resume link, online applications, resume link, and virtual interviews. Okay, so he has 20 years of experience in sales, marketing, business development, customer service, operations, business process, and human resources. As a trusted resource speaker, he has done over 1,000 plus career development seminars in more than 400 plus colleges and universities nationwide. Okay. As the managing director of Jobs180.com, Mr. Kim Chua. Hi, Sir Kim. Good morning, po. Hi, good morning. Uh, yeah. Morning, Joyce. It's good Ayan. to, good morning, Sir to Kim. be doing this. Opo. Can we test uh, your share screen, Sir Kim? Yes, I'm doing it now and I'm uh, making sure that we are on full screen. So just give me the go signal when, when it's all good. All right. So it's up a full screen, na lang, Sir Kim. Um, naka full screen, ah. Not do you see yet. it? Not yet? The... Mm -mm. Let me uh, do this again. Right. So for those who just came in, so again, good morning. Um, for those students who just came in, please comment your name, your year, and your course. Okay? Ayan. Ayan. So I'm doing it again. I'm making sure that we do this on the full screen. Um. Na siya. Uh, let me do an entire screen na lang para Dali lang. All right. So guys, you may watch uh, live via Facebook and YouTube, ah. uh, Jobs 180 Facebook or YouTube page. So either of the people. Mm -hmm. Naka-live nga daw tayo. Tsaka ang dami ng audience. Sakita ko. More than a thousand yes, na ito. Sobrang uh, dami. Oo. Oh, oh. uh, there. Let me know when it's up. So I want to make sure that you can see it na. Okay. Ayan. So I'm doing okay. a full screen now. This time, I hope it's up. <laughs> Loading. Yes, Loading. it's up. Loading. Yes. Ayos. All right. Okay. So um, take it away, Sir Kim. Uh, we'll see po after this and uh, for the Q&A. Thank you. Good luck po. So good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um... Anong si-share ko sa inyo ngayon? I'll be sharing to you about the most secured tool for online application. I'm going to share about the resume link. And this is a, a tool that you can use later on when you look for a job, when you're exploring for career opportunities. Now, I have uh, I have a checklist here to guide you para masabi ko itong tool na ito ba, yung right tool na dapat gamitin. Kasi ang dami-dami mga online platform right now na pwede naman talagang gamitin sa paghanap ng trabaho, pero ba't ko ito nire-recommend sa inyo? Because ito yung tinatawag kong job-winning resume. Ito ang pinaka-secured na platform. And allow me to go through my checklist kung ba't ko nasabi ito ang right tool para sa akin. Okay? So una sa lahat, this tool will help you to stand out. Sa lahat tayo gusto mag-apply ng trabaho ay eh definitely gusto mag-stand out. Diba? Kasi marami tayong kompetensya. This tool can help you to do that. Another thing that this tool can do is that it can consolidate all the information into one file. So hindi mo na kailangan mag-submit ng iba-iba pang information sa mga kompanya na mga, mga files dun sa HR. What you can do now is you can just uh, put everything here in this uh, resume link. Okay? Now another thing that this tool can do is that it helps the process now more efficient. No, hindi na tayo pabalik-balik pag tayo nagsasubmit sa mga companies. Kasi dito pa lang nagkakaalaman na. Yung mga kompanya hindi na kayo papaasahin. At kayo rin naman, di ba? Sino gusto mag, naman sa inyo ang gusto pang pinapaasa? So dito, nagkakaalaman na kung pasado or hindi. Sa unang tingin pa lang. Ayan. And this tool is also for free. Wala tong bayad. Mukha lang salesman pero wala po itong bayad. Libre po ito. The best part in my checklist is that this tool is the most secured tool. Bakit ko nasabi? Because you want your information to be secured, especially with this day and age, di ba? digital age ngayon, importante ang information, importante rin na i-keep natin in private yung details natin. Okay, so ano ba itong tool na ito? This tool is called the most secured resume platform. This is the resume link. The resume link is a personalized URL. It is a link that anyone can open online anytime. Okay, as an example, you can see on the screen, it says there, John Santos. Halimbawa lang ikaw si John Santos, ang resume link mo pwede maging johnsantos.jobs180.com. Ganun lang kasimple. Yan na po ang resume or ang resume link ninyo. Now, how do you make one? The first step is you have to register. This is absolutely for free. Wala itong bayad. Libre po ito. 
Okay, paano kayo mag-register? Pumunta lang kayo sa website ng jobs180.com, that's www.jobs180.com, at dito kayo mag-register on the upper right side of your screen. Now, as you do that, you have to put the basic information. Information which I will not have to read na. No, alam nyo naman, dapat isulat dyan. Account details nyo, personal details nyo, education background nyo, at kung kayo ay may work experience, ilagay nyo na rin dito. Okay, kung meron. Okay, now, when you start to create your resume, Nick, you also need to create your uh, your resume link. And yung resume link nyo, kadalasan, nakabase siya sa unique name. So, ano bang ba unique name natin? Yung pangalan nyo is a unique name. Example, John Santos. Ginamit ka example kanina. So, if your name is John Santos, pwede siya maging johnsantos.jobs.com. If ever lang may kapangalan kayo, naunahan kayo mag-register, huwag kayo malungkot. Okay, kung naunahan kayo. Pwede mo naman balik ta rin. Pwede mo gawin santosjohn.jobs180.com. So, either way, it can work. Okay? O pwede rin initials lang, J. Santos. Ganon. So, kayo bahala. Ang importante, wala kayong kapareho kahit may kapangalan. Paalala ko rin sa mga nakikinig, huwag kayong OA. Huwag kayong gumawa ng resume link na nakalagay dyan, Barbie Dahl, Cutie Pie, Lover Boy, because it doesn't sound professional when you're going to apply. Now, imagine, pag pumunta ka sa kompanya, sabi ng HR, do you have your resume? And then what do you, what do you answer to the HR? Yes po, meron akong resume. Ang resume link ko po ay eljablo.jobs180.com. E baka matakot yung HR sa inyo pag narinig niya eljablo. Diba? So, huwag mo yan gagamitin. Okay? Just stick to your name. Whatever your name is, it will sound professional. Another thing that I uh, I need to remind you to do is that you have to use a valid email pag kayo nag-register. Ano ba yung mga valid email? Ito yung mga email na nabubuksan natin, kagaya ng Yahoo, Gmail, Rocketmail, Outlook, MSN. Depende anong email nyo. Basta nabubuksan nyo. Huwag nyo gagamitin ng email, kagaya ng francis at facebook.com na email. O kaya... Uh, Joseph at Facebook.com na email. Huwag kang gagamit ng Jennifer at Facebook.com na email. Because if you use at Facebook.com na email, you will no longer be able to receive notifications being sent to you by the companies as well as jobs180.com. So it's very important that you use an email that you can open. Okay, bakit ko nasabi yan? Kasi kailangan mo mag-verify. You have to verify your account as a proof na ikaw nag-register. So dyan matatapos ang first step mo kapag binuksan mo ni email mo, click mo yung verification link, ebidensya na ikaw nag-register. Okay? So you're done with the first step. And the first step is for you to register absolutely for free. Second step is the most logical. Bakit logical itong second step? Kailangan kumpleto ang detalye mo. Okay? Dapat kumpleto. Diba? Sino ba naman sa inyo magsasaya ng oras, magsasamit ng resume sa mga kumpanya, kulang-kulang detalye. So, dapat kumpleto information nyo. Diba? Huwag nyo pahihain ang school ninyo. Dapat kumpleto. So, how do you now do that? What you need to do now is you go back again to jobs180.com, www.jobs180.com, and this is where you now log in. Okay, hindi ka na kailangan mag-register ulit kasi meron ka na account eh. So, you don't need to register twice. Okay, gawin mo na mag-log in. Now, when you log in, you put here your uh, email and your password na ikaw lang may alam. And when you log into your account, you start to fill in the blanks. Now, those blanks, I don't have to go through one by one. Obvious naman, di ba? Pag nakita mo dyan, address. E malamang address mo. Hindi yung address ng pinsan mo. Alis, magkasama kayo sa bahay. Di ba? O, I guess mo na ibig ko sabihin. So, you just have to fill in the blanks. Now, good news sa mga nakagawa na ng resume ninyo, kung meron kang Word file, PDF file, whatever file you have, you can just transfer. Lipat mo na lang, copy and paste lahat ng information mo from whatever file you have dito sa loob ng resume link para maging secured yung data nyo. Kung bakit secured, I'll tell you as we go along. Okay? So in the meantime, lagay mo dito lahat ng mga information. Now, one thing I want to remind as well is that you have to make sure yung contact details nyo updated. Now, hindi lang po yung phone number nyo. Ilagay nyo rin dito pati email nyo. Siyempre, sinabi ko na email nyo. Pati na rin yung mga social media account. Bakit social media? Kasi madalas, pag tinatawagan namin kayo, I'm speaking based on experience as an HR, when we try to call the applicants, most of the time, hindi nila sinasagot yung mga tawag, dalo na pag hindi nila kilala yung tumatawag. So, ano nangyayari? Nag-aantayan, naantay kung mag-text ba yung HR. E, paano kung tamad yung HR? Diba? So, ang gagawin ng HR ngayon is magsisend siya ngayon ng, ng information through PM, private message na lang sa social media nyo. Mas mabilis, makapag-PM, di ba? Are you available Thursday, 10 a.m., so on and so forth. You get my point, okay? So, it's it's going to be easier that way. Mas, mas mabilis yung ating uh, exchange of communication. Now, another thing that I want to remind here is that in your resume, like, meron tayong mga work options sa pwede yung pagpilian. Nakalagay dyan, willing to work night shift, willing to relocate, looking for OJT, willing to work overseas. Ang pwede nyo po gawin dito is just choose. Parang switch lang yan. Yes, no, yes, no, switch. On, off, on, off, switch. Ganun lang mangyayari. And what the system will do is it will try to match you with possible companies na, na nagahanap ng kapareho ng profile nyo. Okay? So dito, wala akong sinasabing automatic may trabaho na kayo. Ang sinasabi ko lang is it will make your life easier. Diba? Kasi mas marami ng company ang pwede mag 
uh, mag-invite sa inyo ng opportunities. Kayo na lang bahala mag-decide sino dun sa mga companies ang i-entertain nyo. Okay? Now, another thing that you do here is you fill in, in fill in the blanks for the education portion. Obviously, lagay mo yung school ninyo dito. Lagay mo rin yung mga seminars attended. Kung meron man, wala tong limit sa space. Kahit magkopyahan pa kayo ng classmates mo, walang problema. Basta lang, make sure alam mo yung mga inattendan nyo na pag-usapan dun sa seminars na yan. You can also put here your certification kung meron kayong mga certification program. At kung meron kayong achievement, ilagay nyo dito. Eh, sigurado naman ako, lahat kayo may achievement na. Okay, huwag mong ilimit ang achievement nyo sa loob lang ng school. Hindi ito limited lang pang academic excellence. You can also put here yung mga pinagkakaguluhan nyo or pinagkakaabalahan nyo sa school. If you're a student leader, you can also put it here. Hindi naman tayo lahat din lister. Hindi naman tayo lahat honor student. ba? So, kung ano pa ibang mga things sa tingin mong achievement mo, you can also put it here. Inside or outside of the school. Okay? Pwede rin yan. Kung busy ka sa barangay mo, isa kang kagawad, ilagay mo rin dyan. Achievement din yun. Okay? Na pagdating sa skills, huwag mong ilimit ang skills mo dyan lang sa course ninyo. Yan ang kadalasan nangyayari sa mga aplikante. They only put the skills that are relevant to their course. Example, education ka. Hindi pagkat education ang course mo, alam mo lang gawin magturo. Maybe you're into photography. You're into calligraphy. Diba? You're into videography. Diba? Mahili ka sa mga arts and crafts at iba pang mga IT stuff. You can also put it here. Remember, whatever you know sa mga skills mo, ilagay mo dito regardless of your course. Na pagkating sa languages, huwag mong ilimit ang language sa dalawa lang. Well, sure ako, dalawa na alam nyo. Okay? At, at the basic, at the very minimum. You know English and you know Filipino or Tagalog to be to be exact sa local dialect. If you know other local dialect, Chabacano, Bisaya, Kapampangan, Ilonggo, pwede mo ilagay dyan. Wala naman limit sa space. Foreign languages, ganun din. French, Japanese, Vietnamese, Korean. Lagay mo dyan. Chinese, anything. No? Wala limit sa space. Now, pagdating sa references, sigurado ko, kilala nyo yung mga references nyo. Ang challenge lang dito is, kayo ba'y kilala ba nila? Kasi madalas pag tinatawagin namin yung mga references nyo, hindi kayo kilala, hindi kayo maalala. So please tell them, ginawa silang reference para at least they know what to tell about it. Okay? Now, yung mga pinagsasabi ko, I think alam nyo na yan. Kaya nga, binilisan ko na lang eh. Kasi alam kong alam nyo na yan. Okay? So, I don't have to go through those parts. Now, what I want to show you next, ito yung mga amazing na portion. Ito yung mga wala sa traditional na resumes natin. Ano tong mga to? Let me start with the portfolio section. The portfolio section allows you to upload evidence of your skills. Example, you claim that you are a graduate later on of a specific school. Ano ebidensya yun? Meron kang transcript. Diba? Meron kang ano, diploma. Diba? Yung iba na sumasagot sa inyo ngayon, meron akong toga or meron akong grad pick, hindi po ebidensya yun. Okay? Now, kung meron kayong uh, ebidensya na pwede pumunta sa ibang bansa, ano sample niyan? Meron kang passport, meron kang visa. Ano ebidensya na wala kang criminal record? Meron kang NBA clearance, police clearance. O, diba? You get my point. Ano ebidensya pwede kang sa sakyan? Meron kang driver's license. So kung ano man yung mga kiniklaim mo, sa yung skills, you can now put it here as proof of that evidence. Okay? Ayan na. Some of you are now thinking, Sir! Sir, eh kung lahat kami pare-pareho na mag-graduate sa, sa school namin, magkaklasi kami, same kami ng curriculum, same kami ng teacher, same kami ng program, eh how will we stand out kung wala naman kami lahat work experience? Example. Now, this is something I recommend that you do. You create a selfie video. It's so easy to create one right now. Kung kayo gumagawa ng TikTok, Panis ito sa inyo, kayang-kaya nyo ito gawin. This time around, huwag ka lang sumayaw. Ang gagawin mo, pretend that you are in an interview. Answer basic questions. Questions like, why should we hire you? Or tell me something about yourself. Diba? Imagine mo nilang na kayo ini-interview. Ang gawin mo, i-record mo sarili mo. Pag hindi mo type, delete mo. Pag type mo, save mo. Then you upload it sa YouTube or sa Vimeo. Maraming mga video channel na libre, pwede mo ilagay dyan. Now, the video, hindi kailangan sobrang haba. It has to be within one minute lang or less. Kasi ang gusto mo gawin dito, i-highlight especially your communication skills. I never said that you have to speak in straight English. But I do recommend, if you can do that, you speak in straight English. Because most of the time, HR people will also evaluate yung communication skills nyo. Aside from that, you can also show hard skills. Ano yung mga hard skills? Kagaya ng, pwede ka magpakita na how to use a soldering iron. Yan, how to fold table napkins. Paano yung proper way of skirting? Yan, example lang. Or ano yung mga flaring kung ikaw ay isang bartender. You get my point. Okay? So, ano gusto niyo pakita dito, whether hard skills or soft skills, you can also put it here. Okay? Now, another thing in your resume link that you can do is your profile picture. Sa profile picture, hindi kailangan formal-formalan. Hindi importante na pumunta sa studio para magpa-picture. Huwag ka na gumastos. Ang importante dito, nakatingin ka sa camera, 
Magbiis ka ng maayos, syempre, medyo decent naman yung outfit natin, and plain background. That is what I recommend. Now, do not upload pictures that look like the right side of your screen. Yung mga sa right side na pinapakita ko ang sample, huwag nyo gagayahin yan. Okay? Yung mga ganyang klaseng ini-edit, may Photoshop, may selfie, mga pakyuti, hindi po mukhang professional tignan. Okay? Another good thing with the resume link is that meron tayo tinatawag na cover photo. Diba? May kasabihan, a picture paints a thousand words. So, sa mga taong hindi magaling ma-express sa words, pasintabi lang sa matatamaan na, meron kayo ngayon pwedeng gawin. You can now showcase those uh, personality through pictures. So, look at my example here. The one on the left, ano siya? Ophthalmologist. Sabi ni iba, I expert. O, diba? So, pwede mo ipakita ka agad dun sa nagbabasa ng resume link nyo, yung inyong personality or yung gusto nyong mensahe. The person on the right, look at the example. Ano kaya siya? Sabi ni iba, office admin. Sabi ni iba, mateki. O, depende na kung paano nyo interpret. O, iba naman, sinasabi, makalat. O, so, so, depende yan sa inyo. Now, another example uh, that's good is uh, this one. Someone from psychology or from neurologist. Diba? Yan, depende. Now, another good example pa. Itong taong to, hindi ito miyembro na akit bahay gang. Ang gusto niya sabihin dito sa kanyang cover photo is that there is no shortcut to success. You'll be able to reach your goal by taking one step at a time. Kaya niya pinakita yung hagdana na inaakyat na pa isa-isa. O, diba? So, I showed you good examples and it's also fitting that I show you not so good examples para you'll be guided. Okay? Huwag kayong magpapakamisteryoso. Okay? Lagay mo dyan picture nyo, lalaki man, babae in between, membro ng LGBTQ plus A plus lahat ng alphabet, lagay mo dyan, walang problem. Okay? Basta lang make sure alam ng HR sino kausap nila. Kasi, Ako mismo, guilty ako dyan. Marami mga pangalan interchangeable. My name is Kim. A lot of people think, babae ako. Sometimes I encountered resume links na kalagi sa kanila, Chris, Sam, George, Joey. Diba? Yung mga pangalan, Nick. Minsan isip ko, lalaki, yung pala babae. So you better put your picture there. Okay? At least alam na HR who to expect. Another example dito na huwag nyo gagayahin, itong pinapakita ko, blanco. Okay? If you don't put your picture there, if you don't have any cover photo, it will not catch the HR's attention. Sayang naman yung application mo. Mapupunta lang yan sa next, next, next. Diba? So, hindi yan titignan ng HR. So, you have to put your picture there. Now, if you want to catch the HR's attention, wag naman, wag naman OA. Okay? In my in my opinion lang to, ha, this is something that doesn't look professional. Kasi ang dating para sa akin, parang tamad. Parang parang ano siya, parang chill-chill lang, happy-go-lucky, parang walang pakil sa buhay. No? Ganun yung dating. So, at least in my opinion, I'm showing you the good and not so good examples. Okay? Now, this is a very good example. Everything that you see here kay ophthalmologist, kay eye expert, lahat na information na gusto mo malaman, nandito na. Lalo na yung kanyang portfolio section. In-upload niya yung mga ebidensya ng skills niya na siya isang licensed ophthalmologist. Now, ba't ko yan pinapakita sa inyo? Kasi ito yung isang paraan para maging efficient yung application process na babawasan niyo pabalik-balik. Diba, kung may kailangan yung HR na malaman sa aplikante, nakita na niya kaagad dito. At kung may gusto kayong ipakita sa HR, pwede mo na rin i-upload dyan, diretso na dun sa resume link ninyo. Now, at this point, I know what you're thinking. Yung mga audience, nag-iisip ngayon, Sir, pag ginawa ko ba yung resume link, yung information ko ba nakakalat na sa buong mundo? Baka naman yung mga details ko nakalantad na sa buong internet. Ang sagot dyan, hindi. Kaya nga ito tinawag na the most secured resume platform because you control your privacy settings 100%. Now, how do you do that? Follow me sa screen na pinapakita ko. Pag log in nyo, punta ka sa dashboard mo, di ba? Sa dashboard mo, mayroong settings. Pag click mo ng settings, pumunta ka sa privacy settings. Inside your privacy settings, you can now choose the information that you want to show or hide in public. Example lang, para makarelate kayo. You don't want to show your birthday. What do you do? Turn it off. You don't want to show your address? Turn it off. You don't want to show your references. What do you do? Turn it off. So lahat na naka-off, hindi lalabas sa public. At ang maganda rito, updated yan real time. Ibig sabihin, if two minutes later na decide mo pakita birthday mo, you can turn it on, save your profile. Lahat na binigay mo ng resume link, updated na rin sila ng information mo. Let's say five days later, gusto mo ipakita address mo. Pwede mo yan i-turn on, i-save mo yung profile. Lahat na binigay mo ng resume link, may kita na rin yung address mo real time. Okay, so again, ikaw bahala ano gusto mo ipakita or itago sa public. Okay? Kayo may control niya. Kaya ito tinawag na the most secured resume platform. So reminder lang sa mga late dumating, tapos na kami sa two steps. Last step na kami ngayon. So reminder lang, ano yung first step? This is register. Walang bayad. Libre po yan. Second step is for you to complete the information. Yan ang pinaka-logical. And in making sure that you complete the information, kailangan interesting yung profile mo. Attractive. Catchy, no? Para makita ng HR yung information mo at babasahin niya. Pag binasa niya, dapat kumpleto detalye nyo. Kasi pag hindi kumpleto, sayang naman din yung opportunity. And make sure na updated din yung information nyo. Para pag tinawagan kayo, marireach kayo ng mga respective companies. Okay? Now we're done with the two steps. We go to the last step. The third step is for you to submit your resume link. 
A lot of you are thinking, sir, paano ko ba ito gagamitin? Malapit na po yung job fair. Mag gusto ko po mag-apply ng summer job, part-time job, or rocket-rocket pa lang. Baka meron dyan opportunities na meron. So, ano pwede nyo gawin? You can now use the following options. Okay, ano itong mga options na ito? Papakita ko sa inyo lahat to practical application. Una sa lahat, pumunta ka sa website ng jobs180.com. That's www.jobs180.com. Dito po sa website, you can now uh, scroll and check for opportunities. Now, reminder din, doon po sa website ni Jobs on 80, may search bar. Yung search bar na makita nyo, hindi nyo search ang resume link. Ang search bar na yan, ang function para lang sa company name, sa position title, at sa location. Okay? Therefore, remind ko lang ulit sa lahat, emphasize ko ha, ang resume link po, hindi searchable. Okay? Hindi sa searchable. So, huwag kayo mag-alala. Ang makakita lang ng resume link nyo, yung bibigyan nyo ng resume link. Yung may alam na eksaktong resume link nyo, sila lang ang makakita ng profile nyo. Okay? So, what do you do on the website of Jobs on 80? You can now scroll for companies. Pag may nakita ang kumpanya gusto mo applyan, submitan mo na information mo. ba? Diba? Pag nakita mo yung kumpanya dyan, edi eh meron. Pag nahinahanap mo yung kumpanya at walang lumabas, edi eh wala. ba? Diba? Huwag hindi pilitin pag wala. Wala talaga. Pag meron, meron. Okay? Now, what happens here is that when you submit your information to those companies, kahit na hindi ka pa qualified, recommend ko, bigay mo resume link mo. Okay, ulitin ko yung sinabi ko ha. Kahit hindi ka pa qualified doon sa company or doon sa position, I recommend give your resume link for as long as you are interested to be part of that company. Why? Anong, anong reason? Moving forward, today, nag-apply ka sa kompanya, wala ka pa experience. Yung kompanya nagahanap ng at least, example lang ha, at least two years of work experience. Eh right now, wala ka pang work experience. But I'm sure, two years from now, when you graduate, you will already have two years experience. So you never know. ba? Diba? By two years later, pwede ka na nila kontakin dun sa opportunity na yun. Or, baka hindi mo ka lang antayin yung two years. As you update your profile, pwede na siya mamatch sa mga hinahanap nung company na yon na information. At pwede kayo kontakin. Okay? Now, another practical application ng resume link is to send this via email. A lot of you are sending your resumes through email. Pero paano nyo ginagawa? Ito yung kadalasang ginagawa ng mga aplikante. Nagagawa sila ng email at ina-attach nila yung resume nila. Tama ba? Uh, this is normally what you do. Dear HR Manager, I'd like to apply for the following position and this is my resume. Ia-attach mo yung Word file, PDF file, or whatever file. If that is how you're doing it, kapag nag-attach ka pa ng mga file, ang tawag dyan, traditional, pampabagal, makaluma. Hindi ko sinabing mali. Sabi ko lang, traditional, pampabagal, makaluma. Hindi mo na kala mag-attach ng anything. Ang gawin mo, write the same email. This time, write your resume link. Dear HR Manager, I would like to apply for the following position. This is my resume. Diretso na. In my example, look at the screen. Antonio Juan de la Cruz, that jobs on idiot.com. I hope to refer mo soon. Thank you. Send. Tapos na. Whatever information you want to update, you update inside your resume link. Hindi yung pabalik-balik ka ng email. Paano ko nagpalik ka ng address? Mag-email ka sa HR. Dear HR Manager, this is now my updated resume. Paano kung palit ka ng phone number? Email ka na naman sa HR? Dear HR Manager, this is now my updated most recent resume. Ganun ba gagawin nyo? Every time may babaguhin kayo sa profile nyo, maawa naman kayo sa HR. It's so difficult to keep track of those information. Okay? So kayo rin, wala na kailangan mga send ng send ng email. This time around, just update your resume link. Yung attachment ang palitan nyo. At yung link nyo, hindi naman pinapalitan. Eh. It's always that link. Okay? Now, another practical application for your resume link is for you to print your resume link. If you want to print your resume link, pwede rin. Sa mga gusto magkaroon ng hard copies, huwag na kayo gumawa sa Word file or PDF file. Huwag na, huwag na, print nyo. Huwag na. Dito mismo sa loob ng resume link, pwede mo ngayon siya i-print sa dashboard nyo. Mamimili lang kayo kung one column or two column version. Either way, the system will try to compress everything into one page. So maginhawa ang buhay. Pag print mo ang resume link mo, one page na lang. Just go to your dashboard, choose the print option, at mamili na lang kayo kung one column or two column version. Okay? Another practical application sa mga gusto magtipid sa pagpiprint, pati na rin secure the information, ang gawin nyo, resume link card. Resume link card. Parang business card. Uh, look at the screen, di ba? So anong pwede nyo gawin? In one small piece of paper, halimbawa lang, uh, small band paper or, or long band paper, depende sa inyo, gusto yung size, you can now create multiple sets of cards. Pwede ka mag-design, pwede ka mag-customize mag, mag ng itsura ng gusto nyo mang itsura ng resume link card nyo. Okay? And in one small band paper, I think you can make 10-20 sets of cards. And that is what you now give to the companies. Pa isa-isa lang, malilit na papel. Look at the picture I'm showing you. Diba? Pag pumunta sa kompanya, ma'am, can I apply to your company? Uh, do you have your resume? Ma'am, meron po. Iabot mo sa kanya yung maliit mong resume link card. Ano laman yung resume link card mo? Nakalagay lang dyan, resume link nyo, syempre. Diba? At kung ano pang gusto mo information, put your name 
or maybe your contact details. Depende sa inyo. Pero ako, recommend ko just your resume link. Bakit? Okay, bakit? For two reasons. Una, very obvious, tipid ito. Because you don't have to print 10 sets of long bond paper or short bond paper mag apply ka sa 10 companies. You just have to print one long bond or short bond lang, isa lang, then you just cut them. 10 pieces and submit that to each of the company. That's the first obvious reason, tipid. Pangalawang reason is secured ang data mo. Bakit? Kung nagbigay ka ng short bond paper mo or long bond paper na resume mo sa isang company at nilipad ng hangin yun, whoever gets hold of that paper, may nakapulot ng papel mo, alam na buong detalye mo. Tama? Hindi mo kasalanan yun, kasalanan ng hangin, nilipad eh. Diba? May nakapulot. So nakita niya buong information mo. Now, using the resume link card, Meron kang peace of mind. Kampante ka, kampante. Bakit? Kasi pag nilipad man yan, may nakapulot, hindi mo kilala yung tao kung sino may nakapulot, ang makita lang niya, resume link mo. Eh sino ba may control ng resume link na privacy settings mo? Di ba ikaw? So you control everything here. Depende what you want to show or what you want to hide in public. Ayos? Ayos ma. Okay, tuloy pa natin. Another practical application is for you to use your gadget. Sa panahon ngayon, marami pong mga aplikante hindi na po gumagamit ng papel. Sa totoo lang, in my experience, a lot of applicants are using the technology no, to their advantage. They have their smartphone, they have their gadget, their, their laptop. So use it. Now, huwag niyo ko gawing dahilan para magpabili sa parents niyo. Baka sabihin niyo, Mami, Daddy, bili kayo ng latest gadget. Kasi sabi ng speaker namin, si Sir Kim, kailangan latest gadget yung kailangan. Hindi ko sinabing ganun. Okay, huwag niyo ko gawing excuse. Ang sinasabi lang, kung meron kayong gadget, make do with it. Okay, gamitin natin. Take advantage. Kung wala, then try to be resourceful. Manghiram muna tayo. Hiram lang. Tapos gawa ng resume link. Pag meron ka ng resume link, kahit wala kang gadget, pwede mo to gamitin. You can put it on a small piece of paper and give that, that paper as a resume link card to the companies. Or you can write this down on the registration forms. Parang contact tracing lang yan. Diba? Ang dami-dami hiningi. Name, email, phone number, address, course, gender, height, weight, postal code. Ang haba-haba. This time, wala na kailangan dami-dami sulat. Lagay mo lang dyan, resume link sa kapangalan. And I'm sure the companies that you're applying to, they have internet connection. They can just simply type it sa browser, whatever they're using, Google Chrome, Firefox, Android, Safari, they can type it there for as long as they know your exact resume link na kayo ang magbibigay nun. Okay? So to wrap this up on my uh, resume link topic, checklist lang, are you using the right tool? Kaya ako nga ito emphasize na ito ang pinaka-secured na platform at nire-recommend nire ko sa inyo ito ang right tool pagdating sa online application because of the following reasons. Una sa lahat, you control your privacy settings. 100%. Ikaw may control niyan. Dagdag bawas, ano papakita mo, tatago mo, ikaw may control ng privacy settings mo. Pangalawa, the speed of hire becomes faster. Whatever you want to show or not to show in the HR, you can now attach it there sa loob ng resume link mo. And whatever the HR needs from you, you can also attach it there. Hindi na yung mag-email ka, papadala ka, papabalik ulit, email, reply, email, reply. Ang tagal. This time, nandyan na lahat. Diba? Flexible in terms of printing it out. So, kung kailangan mo lang ng hard copy, hindi mo na kailangan mga problema pa kung saan mo sinave pa na file. This time, just open your resume link and print. Mamili ka lang kung one column or two column version. At higit sa lahat, wala po itong bayad. Libre. Okay? Libre. Sa mga humihilit sa inyo ngayon, ng mga pilosopo, sir, kailangan ko po ng data para magkaroon nito, I, I, I agree with you. Kailangan mo talaga internet connection para gumawa ng resume link. Now, you can be resourceful. Makikonect mo na tayo sa kapitbahay natin. Diba? Or sa nearest lugar na mayroong wifi. And later on, you can pay back. Bayaran mo internet nila kapag may trabaho na kayo. Okay? So, marami pa itong ibang benefits. You can share your resume link to whatever platform you want to share it to. You want to share it sa Viber, sa Messenger, sa text. Kayo bahala. Kayo ang magde-decide sino bibigyan mo ng resume link niyo. Kayo may control. You don't need to save it sa USB or hard drive and you don't have to worry about compatibility. Lahat ito compatible. O ha? Di ba? Pwede. Whatever platform gamit mo, pwede yan. Whatever version, you can use your resume link. Okay? So, shout out lang ako sa lahat ng school partners natin. By the grace of God, meron na po tayo ngayong 400 plus, more than 400 colleges and university partners nationwide, including your alma mater. That's why we're so grateful that we have this opportunity na i-share ito sa inyo. And I hope it doesn't end here. It doesn't end with you. You also share this to your relatives, to your friends that you think would benefit from this uh, from this tool. So share the blessing diba, to others. Wala naman itong bayad. Okay, makakatulong pa. So sa mga iba nag-iisip sa inyo, just in case lang, no, meron tayong Q&A later on. Kung mabitin tayo sa Q&A, ito yung mga common frequently asked questions na tinatanong sa akin ng mga aplikante. So isa sa mga tanong nila is, can I give my resume link to companies who don't know about Jobs180.com? Pwede ko ba ito ibigay pag hindi na kilala yung Jobs180? The answer is, yes! For as long as they know your exact resume link, kayo magbibigay nun for them to know. Okay? Hindi nila mahulaan yan. Unless lahat ng possible combination, gawin nila. Diba? Which I don't think they'll do it. Okay? Next, 
Second tanong, is it the same as other job site? Kagaya ng LinkedIn, JobStreet, iba pang mga job site. The answer is no. May dalawang pagkakaiba. Okay? Para lang ano, ano tayo, with respect to other job site, let me use JobStreet as an example. If you have a JobStreet resume, pwede mo lang gamitin yan sa mga kompanya na gumagamit din ng JobStreet. Pag ina-apply mo ang kompanya, hindi gumagamit ng JobStreet. Hindi mo na rin pwede gamitin yung JobStreet na resume mo. Yung resume link, pwede mo gamitin kahit na kanino, kahit na saan, kahit sa ibang bansa, pwede rin. Basta may internet connection, pwede nila makita yung information mo. But you have to give them, of course, your resume link. Now, second difference is, kung nabigay mo na yung job street resume mo, example lang, to an HR, nabigay mo na, touch move na yon for 30 days, wala kang pwedeng baguhin. Hindi mo na pwede edit yan. With your resume link, pwede mo palit-palitin anytime, real time. Diba? Next 30 seconds, next 20 minutes, ikaw bahala, pwede mo i-update real time yung information mo. Okay? Third question, can I keep my information secured? The answer here is, yes. I hope by this time, na-convince ko na kayo ito ang pinaka-secured na resume platform para sa inyo. Okay? Now, the fourth question is, I think, the most important question. How often should you update your resume? Like, gano ba kadalas? Ang sagot dyan, every time na meron kayong babaguhin, lalo na ang contact details nyo. Yan ang pinaka-importante. Pag nagpalit ka ng contact details mo, make sure you update your resume link para pwede pa rin kayo kontakin ng mga prospective companies nyo. And the last question is just a trivia. Trivia lang yan. Bakit siya tanawag na jobs180.com? The reason why this is called jobs180.com, it's because we want to turn your life around 180 degrees. Hindi siya 360 Bakit? Kasi babalik ka lang kung saan ka galing. Pag 360, umikot ka lang na umikot. Hindi ka na makakarating sa pupuntahan mo. Kaya dapat 180 degrees lang. It is a straight line towards your career goal. Oh, ha? Ayos? O, oh, ba? So just in case may tanong pa kayo na yan magtanong, you can go to our website, email us or email me here sa info at jobs on ETI.com. Like sa Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, pati na rin sa TikTok. Okay, na doon na rin kami. Nakikiuso na rin kami. Okay? Now, let's, let me now proceed to the second topic. Yeah, the next topic ko is about interview tips. This is a very short topic lang para sa inyo na nag-iisip ngayon, paano pa nga ba ako pupunta sa interview? Kasi wala nang physical interview. Halos right now, no, because of the pandemic, puro virtual interviews. Now, the the tips I will share to you are very practical that you can use both for physical and for virtual interviews. Okay? So ano tong mga to? Una sa lahat, Research about the company. Mag-ingat sa mga fly-by-night, mga loko-loko, sira, ulong kumpanya. Ang dami mga companies ngayon na take advantage sa mga fresh graduate. Kung may na-encounter kayo mga companies na, example, mga illegal recruiters, mga illegal recruitment, isumbong nyo yan kay, hindi kay Tulfo, okay? kay Dole, o kaya kay POEA. Pwede, pwede rin kay Tulfo. Makakarating niya sa mga tanggapan ng mga offices na yan. No? Pero mas diretso na tayo sa Dole or sa POEA. Okay? Research about the company. Mag-ingat sa mga company na, na illegal. Okay? Next, research about the company. Therefore, you have to get all this information pag kayo'y tinawagan na. Okay? Kasi madalas pag tinawagan kayo ng, ng interviewer to schedule for interview, nakakalimutan natin. O walang tayo na oo kasi excited tayo. Biglang nakalimutan na ano pala yung dapat, uh, dapat paghandaan or sino dapat kausapin or ano yung schedule. So you have to take note of that. Okay? Another thing that you need to do in as much as you are prepared for the interview, your gadget has to be prepared as well. Okay? Especially for virtual. For virtual setting, ano yung mga kailangan ayusin? Kailangan mo ayusin yung gadget nyo. Number one, kailangan fully charged. Kasi bang mo yan, nandun ka na sa job offer portion, bigla na wala ka ng baterya, na walang kuryente, sayang naman. Okay, that's that's one. Second, you have to make sure na you install the proper application. Kasi hindi mo alam kung ano yung, prop, ano yung app na gagamitin. Diba? Kung Zoom ba yan, Google Meet, diba? depende, Webex, diba? Eh, ang dami. Baka gumagamit sila ng Skype. Iba sa inyo, yun yung alam yung Skype, di ba? So, you, you, you have to make sure lang alam nyo yung, yung app na gagamitin, okay? Another thing is that you have to have a good internet connection. Now, pasintabi lang po no, sa lahat ng network sa Pilipinas. Bulok kasi talaga sa Pilipinas ang internet natin. Wala tayong magagawa, okay? So, kung saan man yung may pinakamalakas sa signal, doon na tayo, okay? Now, if ever lang, if ever lang, sa bubong yan, kapit lang kayo. Paano kayo mahulog sa bubong, okay? Now, joke lang. Now, find that good internet connection and please turn on your camera, pagdating po sa virtual interview. Kaya nga ito tinawag na virtual, hindi ito dahilan para hindi nyo buksan ang camera nyo. Diba? Nakita ba kayo sa face-to-face -face interview na pumunta yung aplikante sa, sa, sa company tapos naka-blindfold? Hindi naman ganun, ba? So ganun din yan pagdating sa virtual interview. You have to make sure you show yourself. Now, if the internet will not allow you because mahina talaga yung signal, magpaalam kayo. Try to open your cam at least for about one minute or two 
at least nakita kayo ng HR na kayo talaga in-interview nila at magpaalam lang kayo. And I'm sure the HR will understand. Sabihin mo sa kanila, ma'am, sir, mahina po internet namin. Okay lang po ba? I-close ko yung internet, uh, yung camera ko, okay, for faster interconnection. Make sure then that when you open your camera, dapat well lit. Dapat nakita kayo. Hindi yung mukhang shadow lang kayo. Okay, dun sa sa camera. Another thing to remind you is that hanggat maaari, keep the sound minimal. Hanggat maaari, zero noise. Na meron tayong mga avoidable and non-avoidable talaga. Ano yung mga avoidable? Yung mga avoidable ay eh, kung mga tao sa bahay nyo maingay. Pwede mo sila sabihin, huwag mo sila maingay. Kung kumakain man sila or yung aso nyo tumatahol, paalisin mo muna, palayasin mo muna yung aso mo. Diba? Pwede ganyan. Pero yung mga non-avoidable, example lang, may dumaan ng malakas na motorosiklo. Diba? Yung wala, naka-open muffler, ang ingay sa background, wala tayong magagawa. Diba? May tumitila ako na manok, hindi mo manok yun. Manok ng kapitbahay mo. Ano gagawin mo? Gawin mo tinola. Mamayang lunch. Diba? Before the interview. Kaya ang joke lang. Pero ang point ko is, meron talagang unavoidable sound. So wala tayong magagawa. Just make do with what you have. And best of all, you have to conduct a test run. You have to test the, the gadget no? before you go through that interview. Going to the interview, first impression counts. Do not be late and do not be on time. Do not be late. Obviously, when you're late, you lose the opportunity. When you're on time, huwag yung sakto lang sa oras. Dapat nandun ka mga 5 minutes or kahit pa paano 10 minutes before para you need time to load your gadget and be prepared na for the interview. So, ito yung mga, mga damit na dapat natin iwasan at dapat yung suotin. So, re-remind ko lang sa inyo. Okay? Una sa lahat, hindi po ito fashion show. Huwag kayo mag ng mga outfit of the day ninyo dito, yung mga OOTD. Hindi ko alam kung uso pa yan ngayon. Pero huwag nyo gawing fashion show ito sa ibang media yan, sa ibang social media nyo gamitin yan. Okay? Hindi po sa interview portion. So, what do I recommend? I recommend you keep it basic. Sa mga ladies, wear your blouse. If you have your blazer, put it on. Whatever you're wearing, if you, if you put your blazer on, it will, you will look professional. Okay? Another thing to remind you then is that huwag kayo magsuot ng mga dress. Nakadress nga kayo, pero see-through naman. Diba? Huwag kayo magsuot ng see-through na dress. Huwag kayo magsuot ng plunging neckline, yung mga revealing, yung mga balat-balat ninyo. Okay? Huwag po natin ipapakita yan sa camera, okay? sa HR. So, show some respect din. Diba? So, Balot-balutin natin kahit papaano ang konti. And then, do not wear statement t-shirts. Yung mga statement shirts, yung mga nakalagay kagaya ng sample ko, real women drink beer. Diba? Pag nakita ng HR, baka isipin niya, ano eh, mag-inuman na lang kayo, di ba? Baka niyaya mo mag-inuman. So, hindi ganun yung dapat natin suotin. Okay? Now, for the for the gentlemen, ang recommend ko, keep it basic then, no? Basic conservative, wear your polo, short sleeves, long sleeves, magbarong kayo. If you want to wear your necktie, it's really up to you. you want to wear your suit, it's really up to you. No, walang problema dito. Now, paalala ko lang, kailang komportable kayo. Hindi yung nakaporma ka nga, todo outfit, tumatagak, takaman yung pawis nyo. So, yan yung mga iwasan natin. Okay? Nakapolo man kayo, naka-open naman. Diba? Kita pa yung chest hairs nyo. Diba? Huwag, huwag ganun. Hindi siya mukhang professional. And of course, do not wear statement shirts. Okay? Na sa pambaba naman, ang maganda kasi sa virtual, you don't need to worry about sa pambaba. Whatever you're wearing, shorts, or or whatever sa baba, or you're not wearing anything, hindi naman makita yan sa virtual interview. Pero sa face-to-face, ang recommend ko, ito yung suotin nyo. Wear your skirt sa mga ladies. Wear your pants if you have your, your slacks. Pwede rin. Sa mga lalaki, wear, huwag kayong mag-skirt. No, obviously, wear your pants. Okay? Wear your slacks. So that's what you wear pagdating po sa uh, interview. Now, pagdating po sa mga mannerisms, paalala ko lang din, may mga may mga nonverbal uh, actions tayo na that's uh, giving signs that you're not confident. Ano yung mga yan? Whether it's face-to-face or virtual interview, do not take the call. Okay, no matter how important that is, unless it's a matter of life or death, then of course you take the call. Okay, pero pag hindi Huwag niyo gawin 'yon. Okay? Give respect to the time of the HR. The HR gives their time as well for you. So, Huwag niyo muna sagutin yung mga tawag niya or mag-answer ng mga messages. Do not slouch, lalo sa virtual, because you're being interviewed sa bahay niyo. Diba? Siyempre, doon ka sa bahay mo, nasa kawarto ka or nasa sofa ka. Minsan, uh, lumulubog ka na sa upuan kasi chill na chill ka. So, do not slouch. Huwag ka mag-fidget. Ano yung fidget? Kuyakoy. Kasi kahit hindi nakita yung kuyakoy ng, ng tuhod mo or ng paa mo, nagsishake pa rin yung katawan mo, nakita yan. On the face-to-face interview, obviously, kita na yan. Pero sa virtual, hindi kita. Pero nakita pa rin yung movement mo. So, it's so distracting. Do not fix your hair every time na lang, every few seconds. Hawi ng hawi ng buhok. Diba? Yung mga ladies, minsan hawi ng hawi ng buhok. So, fix your hair. No? Lagyan ng clip, lagyan ng uh, headband. Sa mga lalaki, lagyan ng wax. Or ipitin nyo ng, ng ano nyo, headset nyo para hindi siya bumabagsak. Don't play with your with your stuff. May mga, may iba sa mga aplikante, naglalaro ng mga ballpen. Diba? Ini-LEC yung ballpen. May iba't initik-tik yung ballpen. So kahit hindi nakita sa camera yan, naririnig pa rin yan. Look at what, what I'm doing. You can still hear it. Diba? So yan yung mga things that's uh, causing a lot of distraction. And best of all, isa mga reminders ko dito, maintain eye contact. Okay, paano ka mag-maintain eye contact kung wala naman sa face-to-face? Nandito tayo sa virtual interview. Look at the camera. Okay? Huwag ka tumingin kung saan-saan. Huwag ka gumanyang ganyan saan-saan sa audience mo, sa HR mo. Kasi hindi ka nakakonect. 
you look at the HR straight through the lens of your camera. As if what I'm doing now. O, diba? Parang kita nyo, nakatingin ako sa inyo. Ganon. Okay? So, reminder ko lang din, uh, last slide ko na po ito. Sa interview naman, practice, practice, practice. Okay? What I recommend, you take a screenshot. If you miss this portion, you can go back later on and watch the replay sa YouTube namin, sa Facebook. You can watch this pa rin. These are the common questions being asked during the interview. I will not go through each and every one of them, but instead, let me give you a tip. Ang pwede nyo gawin, practice not only in front of a mirror, but use your gadget. Get your smartphone, record yourself on how you answer those questions. Ask someone, maybe your friend or relative, your parents, kuya mo, ate mo, tanungin mo sila for their honest opinion how you're doing with that answer. Diba? Ganon. And then, you just keep on practicing. These are just some of the common questions. Lalo na yung unang-unang tanong, hindi talaga na kumukupas yan kahit gasgas na gasgas na. Tell me something about yourself. So, you better practice all these questions. Okay? So, kung sakali lang may tanong kayo na hiyang magtanong, just go to our website, email or email here sa info at jobsonity.com, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, pati na rin sa TikTok. Okay? My name is Kim Chu. Wa, don't forget yung wa. Isang magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Salamat sa pakikinig. Thank you. All right, so thank you so much, Sir Kim. Ayan, so guys, if you have questions, you may um put your questions on the comment section, okay, or in the comment box. Okay, so Sir Kim, um, since we have many speakers for today, so you'll be asking lang one or two questions, na so and of course, yung pinaka importante, so para dun sa mga late comers, ano po ba yung benefits ng pagkakaroon ng resume link? Okay. Let me go straight to the point. Anong benefits para gumawa ng resume link? Una sa lahat, pag meron kang resume link, you will be getting possible job notification. So, imbis na ikaw yung lumalapit sa mga kumpanya, yung mga company ngayon, ang lumalapit sa'yo, sila yung kumakatok. Okay? Hindi, hindi physical, hindi sa bahay nyo. Doon lang sa account ninyo. So, kayo na lang magde-decide if you want to entertain them or not. At least sila na yung lumalapit. Diba? Marami ng possible opportunities. At the comfort of your home, you can apply and choose which of the companies ang gusto nyo pasukan. Second, second na kita kong practical application nito, practical benefit, is that you'll be getting invitation for future events. Kagaya ng webinar na ginagawa natin ngayon, pag yung school ninyo nag-organize po ng uh, webinars, pag ati uh, virtual job fairs, pag may virtual career fair tayo, makaka-receive po kayo ng invitation na yan. And it's really up to you to decide if you want to join or not. At least, nakakita nyo yung mga possible opportunities. Yan. Another thing is that your information will be secured. Needless to say, you control your privacy settings. Ikaw, 100% ang may control ng information nyo when you when you create your resume link. So, yan lang ang makita ng mga company na bibigyan mo ng resume link mo. Sa mga hindi mo bibigyan, hindi nila malalaman ang resume link mo. Okay? Kasi hindi siya searchable. So, yun. Alright. Thank you. So, maraming maraming salamat, Sir Kim. Thank you so much po. So guys, um, to know more about Treasure Mailing, you may visit www.shops180.com. Okay, so, um, medyo maliit yung ano, certificate. Let, let me read the citation. Okay. I-open ko sa isang ano, para makita. Ayan. 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 Habang in-open so, ni Ma'am Joyce. <laughs> ayan. So, ayan. So, um, to award the certificate, so, Bataan Peninsula State University, May Nabukay, Bagak, Balanga, Dinalupihan, Orani, Philippines. Certificate of Appreciation is given to Mr. Kim Chua as a key speaker in the pre-employment orientation virtual seminar for his phenomenal and worthy presentation on the topic um, resume link, online applications, and virtual interviews in the pre-employment preparation talk PEP 2021 for the graduating class of Bataan Peninsula State University organized by DPSU Office of the Student Affairs Job Placement Office in collaboration with Jobs180.com. Given this 24th day of November 2021 at Bataan Peninsula State University, Bataan, Philippines, um, signed by Dr. Emmanuel C. Macaraeg, PhD, Vice President for Academic Affairs, and signed uh, by Gregorio, Mr. Gregorio Rodis, PhD, the University President. So, maraming maraming salamat, Sir Kim. Maraming so, maraming na... salamat din. Oh, palala ko lang, no? check out yung link schools.jobs180.com slash BPSU. Nagsuscroll sa screen ninyo. Oh, makita nyo yan kanina. Ayan, mm -hmm. nagsuscroll pa rin ngayon. So, tignan nyo na lang yung link. Maraming companies po nandyan. Thank you yeah. and be safe. Ayan. So, thank you so much, Sir Kim. Again, to know more about Chops180.com, you may visit um, www.chops180.com. And if you have questions, questions guys, um, we'll try to answer them. And then you may also um, um, message us po sa aming Facebook page. Okay? So to present our next um, speaker for today, so we'll talk about top skills employers look for. So we have the manager of 
um, Faxit. So profile for introduction. So he's, um, he's the manager at Faxit Philippines Incorporated, responsible for managing and developing the new members of the team through series of training and coaching throughout their probationary period. Ensure that they are equipped with the right foundation in terms of product knowledge and standard gui guidelines prior to joining their respective teams as regular employees. So before moving to Faxet, um, he was a college instructor at Bulacan Agricultural State College where he also earned his degree in business administration major in marketing management. Again, the manager of um, Fine Solutions Faxet, Mr. Mark Lennon S. Manuel. Good, af good morning, Sir Mark. Good morning, Ms. Joyce. So thank you for that introduction and good morning also to our audience. Okay. Can thank you for test? having us today. All right. Thank you, sir. Can we test your share screen? Yes, yeah, sure. One second. All right. Okay, I just shared it. Please let me know once it's visible. All right. Okay. So it's up. So you have 20 minutes. Po, so I'll be back for the Q&A. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Ms. Joyce. So again, good morning, everyone. I am Mark Lennon Manuel. Just a quick reintroduction of myself. I'm a Client Solutions Manager at Faxet Philippines, Inc. So today I am tasked to present to you or to share with you the top skills that employers look for when hiring. Just one second. So since I will not be able to cover everything, so you know that there are a lot of skills out there. So I just uh, listed down the top five that I believe um, that employers do consider when looking for a prospective employee. So this is these are the skills that are regardless of the company or the job that you'll be applying for. So the first top skill that I listed down is communication skills. So I believe most, if not all of you will agree if I say that this skill is needed in virtually any job. So employers nowadays desire, desire team members who can successfully interpret what's being asked of them and as well as look for those who can effectively communicate with others. So if you have the ability to share a message in a concise and organized manner, and of course, without leaving any room for misinterpretation or misunderstanding, so this will be an essential quality to become successful in any career. So of course, we also expect that when we become a part of a company, we are expected to communicate with our peers, to work directly with our clients, to report to our managers and supervisors, and sometimes will be tasked to do presentations or some report. So whether it be written or oral communication, we cannot really argue that this skill is one of the most sought, sought after by any employer. So when you are trying to communicate, so that the things that you need to take note of is to be clear, to be cohesive, to be complete, concise, and concrete. So communication skill also involves writing, speaking, listening, and negotiating. So that is the first skill um, for all of you. The second one is, Leadership skills. So as written here in the slide, it is the ability to bring a group of people together and provide direction and guidance while working towards a common goal. So again, just like communication skills, leadership skills are one of the soft skills that many employers look for in any candidates. So if you also have an innate leadership ability, it will be um, a guaranteed help at any levels of your career. So some of you, or most of you might be wondering, why do I need to consider leadership skills, especially if I'm just um, vying or eyeing to be uh, to to be to, to land for um, an entry level position. So if you're just a fresh graduate trying to get your first job or trying to uh, be hired at your dream company, why do you need to consider leadership skills? So you need to take note as well that you don't have to be in a supervisory role or management role to exhibit and develop. Um, and leadership skills. So when you, for example, you take a stand for something or you head up a project, even if it's just a project in school, if you're still studying, or if it's just a small project in your team, so that way you are already showing leadership skills in action. So as we all know as well, leadership is bringing out the best in people and trying to motivate others to make sure that um, the tasks are completed promptly. So also leader is different from a boss. I believe some of you, if not most of you are familiar with that, that boss just uh, commands other people to do things a certain way, but leader acts differently. So leaders uh, try to influence others through their actions for others to become better and much more effective with what they do. 
So being able to lead as well is one of the top considerations of the upper management to promote you to a much higher level position. So if you're planning to, or if you're, you are looking to also um, move up the corporate ladder eventually, so trying to exhibit the skill during the interview process or the first part of the application process will be a good thing for each of you. So that is the second skill. We have communication, we have leadership. The third one is learning or adaptability skills. So it is the willingness to learn alternative approaches and alternative ways of doing things. So basically, um, if you are teachable, if you are adaptable, so this will allow you to learn new things and will enable you to learn, uh, will enable you to adapt to the different situations in the workplace. So learning or adaptability skills is very important, especially um, given the ever-changing needs of the workplace and also the needs of the employers to be on top of the competition every time. So for some employers uh, to be to maintain their competitive edge, what they do is they'll try to implement new initiatives. Sometimes they will restructure a specific department and sometimes they will decide to change a long-standing process that has been accustomed to a lot of employees. So it's important to have learning or adaptability skills because um, by nature, right, us humans are very resistant to change. So having to have this skill will set you way apart of other candidates and it will definitely show the employers or the hiring manager that you are willing to, um, to adapt, you're willing to learn new things if it's necessary. So this is also a skill that is vital to differentiate those employees who normally stay longer in a job or a company from those who quit early. So if you wanted to um, get give an impression that you will be staying long for a company, you'll be contributing to the attainment, attainment of their objectives. So showing this skill as well in, in the uh, application process or the only the, the application process will definitely definitely be a plus plus points <clears throat> for you. So that's about it for learning and adaptability skills. So the fourth one is self-management skills. It is the ability to manage our behaviors, thoughts and emotions in a conscious and a productive way. So it's basically just uh, managing oneself. So if you can manage your own self, it will allow you to manage your time and you will be as productive as possible in the workplace. So the skill ensures that you prior, priori, sorry, that you prioritize your task effectively, that you focus on your professional growth while at the same time contributing to the organization as a whole. So it means having good time management skills, organization skills, you are self-driven and you have the ability to get things done in, with minimum supervision. So it allows your managers to focus on the things that they need to work on and you yourself can show them that you can finish the task independently. So this is important. This is an important skill, especially during this time of pandemic, since majority of us, if not all of us, are working from home or are working remotely. So even if you are left alone, no one's actually watching you or seeing what you're doing. So you, you, this is um, an assurance that you'll be able to finish the task, the projects, and also um, you'll be able to submit all the deliver deliverables before the said deadline. So that is the fourth skill. The fifth one and the last skill that I'll be sharing with you is computer skills. So as uh, Sir Kim mentioned earlier, we are now living in the digital age. So with that said, we can now expect that most, if not all occupation, require the use of a computer in some capacity. So they may require us to do just like simple web searching or the basic knowledge about Microsoft Office tools like PowerPoint, Excel, and Word. So if you are applying for a job that requires more advanced computer skills, so for example, they're requiring you to have um, digital software knowledge, uh, SQL, C++, Python, those kinds of things, programming languages. So be sure that you highlight the skills on your resume as well if you possess them. So it will help you out better in landing the job, the, your dream job. So these five skills right here are very important for the employees, the employers, sorry, especially during this time of 
pandemic. So they look for candidates who can communicate effectively both face-to-face -face and in virtual. They also look for those who can still influence others to keep the motivation and productivity high and who can adapt to the ever-changing workplace and business needs. So aside from these top five skills that I shared with you, I would also like to take this opportunity to, to dive deeper into one of the skills that I mentioned earlier. So that is the first one, which is communication. So since most, if not all, of our audience today are fresh grads or graduating students, so I hope uh, these quick, quick tips will allow you to become more effective communicator during a job interview. So let me just go over the next slide. So here are the tips. And according to Ralph G. Nichols, that's why I, I would like to highlight communication in this presentation. So the number one criteria for advancement and promotion for professionals is an ability to communicate effectively. So what are the tips that I do have for all of you today? So I have listed down four. The first one is to be efficient with your speaking. So I have here the phrase kiss instead of kill. So kiss stands for, it is an acronym that stands for keeping it short and simple, while kill means keeping it long and lengthy. So for you to, in order for you to do kiss, so you have to avoid the use of filler words such uh, as um, well, like, I mean, hmm, I guess, ah, uh, you know, to fill in the silence in your answers. So another way as well for you to be efficient is to remove the parts of your message that are not important. So if you talk too much during an interview, it can backfire at you at some point. So it, it can be a grave error for anyone. So if you ramble during an interview, it will only tell the interviewer that you are not confident enough. You don't have the required skills or experience for the job. So instead of saying a lot of things, uh, rambling a lot of words during the interview or using a lot of filler words, it will be better for you to pause for a bit to structure your thoughts before you speak. So what's um, doing doing so, you will come out as you think things through before you speak, and that will allow you to also provide an accurate answer in the end. Okay, so for our interviewers, for the hiding, for the hiring managers, shorter answers that tick all the boxes is much better because that just proves that you are a sharpshooter when it comes to your work. So again, be efficient. Do not use filler words. And let me give you an example. So when you're asked about your greatest achievement, for instance, so the best way to answer that is to state your achievement directly, uh, be straightforward about it, and relate that greatest achievement to the position that you're applying for, and list down all the benefits that it will do for the company and for the team. So that's how you should answer that question. So the second tip is to listen attentively. So listening attentively will allow you to answer the question being asked. So again, um, some people might think that communication is about the speaking and writing, but uh, in reality, half of it falls under listening. So it seems obvious, right, that you have to listen to answer the question being asked. But sometimes this is the problem. People tend to answer the question, they tend to answer what they think is the question being asked. So sometimes they assume that this is the question. So this, this is the probable answer. So the good, the tip that I'll, I'll uh, leave to all of you is that if you missed something, if there's something that is um, not clear, you can definitely ask the hiring manager or, or the interviewer to repeat themselves. So ask them to politely to um, repeat the question or try to share your understanding about the question and then um, ask to clarify. So just be careful if you wanted to ask for clarifications. So if you do this one, more than once or twice during the interview, that can also signal the interviewer that you are not listening attentively. So that will also be a red flag for you. So again, listen attentively to answer the question accurately. The second one is to, um, if you listen, you will be able to tie your answers back to the things that were said earlier. So why is that important? So because if you reference something that was discussed earlier in the, the former parts of the interview, it shows that you're not only listening to the interviewer or the hiring manager, but you also have the ability to recall the information or 
to understand the information that they are sharing. So a good time to do this, tying your answers back to the things that were said earlier, is while you ask questions at the end of the interview. So interviewers will allow you or will give you time at the end to ask them some questions. So this is the time that you, you can showcase your listening skills. So one example here is like you can mention that, or you can tell the interviewer that um, you mentioned earlier that your company specializes in financial data. So I'm curious to know how my skills in SQL writing might help the company be successful in delivering the service. So that's one example to show that you are listening attentively. And also, when you listen, so it will be an ultimate benefit for on your part. So you will know more about the job and the people that you will be working with if you get hired for the position. That's why it's important to listen attentively. The third tip is to speak with confidence. So a lot of us get gets nervous, especially if it's, if it's our first time to attend a job interview. And also, as a candidate, it is a must for you to convince the interviewer that you are the right person for the role. So on the part of candidates as well, the interview process requires a lot of self-selling, which some other people might find difficult. But uh, just to ease your nervousness when you are in the interview, just remember that you will not be there in the first place if the interviewer or the company is not interested in your skills. So you can gain confidence by simply practicing and preparing ahead of time. And um, that will ensure that you'll come up as more self-assured when you are speaking to the interviewer. So the next one is to go over your CV or resume a couple of times. So just like what Sarki mentioned earlier, you should remember what you've included in your resume because that will probably come up or that will definitely come up in one of the interviewer's questions. So also, you can reread the job specifications a few times to help remind you about the criteria that you need to meet for the job. So plus, the, the plus uh, tip here is to not overdo, overdo it. But there is always a fine line between being arrogant and being confident. So you have uh, the right you are entitled to be proud of what you've achieved so far. So when it comes to sharing your achievements or skills to the interviewer, um, don't be afraid to show that you are proud of all of them. Just don't um, end up being cocky um, while stating all your achievements throughout the years. So again, speak with confidence. And the final tip for all of you is to, of course, prepare and practice. This has been shared as well by Sir Kim earlier. So the first two things here, research about the company, read and understand the job requirements, and tie it with your skills and achievements are the most important tips when preparing for a job interview. So you need to you need you first need to know what the company does, what is what it is what is its culture, um, the business, the services, their clients, and also uh, try to benchmark or to align your skills to the job requirements. So if you're looking to uh, to get hired to a research analyst position, for instance, so check check your resume, check your CV. If your skills, the, the skills that you put in there, are in line with the job requirements. So this is basically just doing your homework before applying for a job or before attending an interview. So once you've done your homework properly. So you can now anticipate questions that will come up during the interview or, or during the interview, sorry. So you can anticipate questions. But if in case you're just a fresh graduate, you cannot anticipate questions or formulate questions on your own because you don't have any experience yet. So you can always download interview FAQs. There are a lot of um, resources out there available in the App Store, in the Play Store that you can download and you can practice with a trusted friend. You can practice with a classmate as well. You can practice with a family member. And that way you will sound more confident when answering the question, especially if it's something that you've already practiced beforehand. So the fourth bullet here is to ask for feedback. That is very important. So when you are um, practicing for an interview, we're trying to improve your communication skills, always ask for feedback, especially the constructive ones, because that's what those are what will benefit you the most. And the last tip that I have here is to 
read books and watch movies or series. That is one way of pre preparing yourself as well. So doing so will enable you to pocket additional vocabulary, additional words in your vocabulary bag, and will also keep the learning fun because you're watching movies, you're getting different um, expressions, you're getting different um, words from the movies or the series that you are watching. So again, when to improve your communication skills, you have to be very efficient, you have to listen attentively, you have to speak with confidence, and you have to, of course, prepare, 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 and practice, practice, practice a lot. So it's like what they say, practice makes perfect, but if it's not perfect, practice makes better. So that's it for my presentation, but I would also like to take this opportunity to introduce to you Faxit, to let you know who we are. So I'll just read through these slides. So we help investment professionals outperform. So Faxit creates data and software solution for tens of thousands of investment professionals around the world, providing instant access to financial data and analytics that investors use, use to make investment decisions. So we combine hundreds of data sets from industry leading suppliers with our clients own proprietary data to deliver a one-stop source of financial information. So our clients are the top financial professionals working at some of the largest investment firms in the world. So for more than 40 years, through market changes and technological progress, we've maintained our focus on providing exceptional client service. So every job function and department contributes to our overall goal of adding value to our clients' workflow. So our client retention rate, we are very proud of it, has remained at an astounding 90%. It's actually 95% currently which is a testament to the high degree of service and quality for which we've become known. So this is going to be my last slide. So we are hiring. You may check all our career openings at jobs180.com slash facetcareers. So be part of a company that has 160,000 global users, 6,400 client firms, 42 consecutive years of revenue growth, and 95% client retention rate. So thank you everyone for listening and yep. All right, so thank you so much, Sir Mark. Okay, so guys, if you have questions, you may ask um, Sir Mark. So okay, so we'll try to answer them. Okay, so Sir Mark, since um, we're having a today, so I'll be asking one to two questions now. So um, first, um, what are the things what to expect when it comes to their job search during this pandemic? Okay, so what to expect? That's a good question. So they may expect it to be very different from the tradi tradi traditional way of um, seeking job. Because uh, mm -hmm. from before, but we tend to do um, yung face to face, face to face application. We send it, we send our, our resumes um, directly to the companies. But yes. even though it's very much different, it's also very much efficient for every one of us. We have it, we can do it in the convenience of our home, hindi tayo mag-travel, hindi rin tayo papapagod. And also using Jobs 180, we can send it to a lot of other companies, kahit hindi sila gumagamit ng ibang um, job uh, job site platforms. So it's, it will be very efficient then. And mas, mas madali sa atin to, to adapt then dun sa change na nangyari. All right. Thank it's you, sir. Convenient. And of course, thank you, sir. And of course, your advice po for the graduating students po. Since okay. um uh, from different campuses, itong ano, parang six campus po yung BPSU today. Okay. So my my advice for all of you is just to take it easy, take it slow. So yung progress naman is not overnight. Hindi naman natin maabot lahat ng pangarap natin or yung company na gusto natin in just a day. Sabi nga, it is a process, a never-ending process to to achieve your goals. So kahit na may dream company ka talaga while you are studying, tapos hindi mo siya nakuha, like nag one, two, or three attempts ka na. So don't be hard on yourself, just take it lightly. Tapos try to pinpoint or to take down notes dun sa mga areas na kailangan pang improve, and then work on that. Eventually, darating din tayo. And siguro yung mga rejections then along the way is a way, is a way for you to um, get to the point or to get to the position na talagang perfect para sa'yo sa skills mo and also company na bagay talaga para sa'yo. Alright, thank you so much, Sir Mark. Much needed advice talaga. So, one step at a time lang, guys. No? So, bata pa kayo, mas marami pang mangyayari pagkatapos ng grammatic. Ayan. So, thank you so much, Sir Mark. But before you proceed backstage po, so, um, we have 
certificate po from um, BPSU. So let let me read po the citation. So Pataan uh, Peninsula State University, may nabukay bagak balanga din na lupihan orani. Um, the certificate of appreciation is given to Mr. Mark Lenin, uh, Lenin Manuel as a key speaker in the pre-employment orientation virtual seminar for his phenomenal and worthy presentation on the topic Top Skills Employers Look For in the Pre-Employment Preparation Talk PEP 2021 for the graduating class of Bataan Peninsula State University organized by BPSU Office of the Student Affairs Job Placement Office in collaboration with Jobs180.com. Given this 24th day of November 2021 at Bataan Peninsula State University, Bataan, Philippines. Signed by Dr. Emmanuel C. Macaraeg, PhD, Vice President for Academic Affairs, and um, Dr. Gregorio J. Rodis, PhD, the University President. So, Thank you, thank you so much, Sir Mark. Maraming maraming salamat po for joining us today. We wish to have you on our next set of webinars po. Ingat po. Yep. Thank you, Ms. Joyce, and have a great day, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you, sir. So to, norm, to know more about um, Faxet, so you may visit jobs180.com slash Faxet. Okay, so if you have resume link, you may submit your resume link now for um, available positions na meron si Faxet today. Okay, so let's proceed po to our next um, speaker. So... Um, he brings with him over 17 years of experience in supporting the learning and development needs of organizations across levels. Mr. Dennis has a Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology from Ateneo de Manila University. He is also a certified facilitator for situational leadership um, to program for the Ken Blanchard companies as well as the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator or the MDTI program for CPP. Okay, so the Talent Development Assistant Director of EY Philippines, Mr. Al Dennis Di Sopetian. Hi, Sir Al. Good morning po. Hello, hello. Good morning, Joyce. And, you know, a very good morning as well for our faculty, staff, and more importantly, you know, the students from Bataan Peninsula State University. All right. So, um, Sir Al, can we test po your um, screen share? Yes. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen right now. Okay. All right. And let me know if they're able to see the screen already. Yeah, it's loading. Sir, okay, sir, it's up po. So your screen is up po. If you're ready, I'll see you po after 20 minutes for the q &A. Good luck, All sir, right. Al. Thank you. Thank you so much, Royce. So very warm welcome for everyone. Uh, my name is Dennis Supetran. And, you know, the topic that was assigned to me was rerouting your career plans. And I think, you know, the pandemic, though it continues to be, you know, a challenging time for us, marami pa rin tayong challenges na susuungin, dadaanan, at i-overcome. But uh, more important than that, I think, is really um, the insights, eh, yung uh, panibagong punto de vista or your different perspective that this pandemic has allowed each and every one of us uh, to be able to go through it, right? And just going through the list, you know, we have a variety of students joining us, you know, from BPED, from BCE, uh, from tourism, etc., right? And I think uh, this is, you know, a very valuable, and in my case, you know, given my career, I've been working for uh, more than 20 years in the learning and development space, and I've done that, you know, over the course of, you know, uh, different venues, you know, Right out of college, I did, you know, a year's work of volunteer work for uh, Jesuit Volunteers Philippines in Bulan, Sorsogon. And after that, I did a stint as well as a guidance counselor in Ateneo de Manila University. And after that, that's the time that, you know, I was able to enter the corporate workforce. Uh, first off in a BPO, then in a financial services uh, group in HSBC Philippines, where I stayed there for 10 years. And now with EYGDS Philippines, uh, which is, again, you know, uh, different segment. So in this case, you know, and I'll talk more about EYGDS in a little bit. I think um, in terms of my career journey, uh, going across different industries, going across different, you know, types of work, um, rerouting a career plan never really uh, was something that I thought of. It. I always thought of, you know, when I was changing from academia, you know, from volunteer work uh, to uh, the academia, 
to BPO services, to uh, financial services, and now to professional uh, services, right? Uh, accounting, tax, etc. Um, I've not seen it as, you know, different, eh, but rather one whole journey. And I think that's an important part and an important reminder for all of us, eh, uh, regardless of whether you're foreseeing, ah, I want to, you know, I want a career in tourism. I want to be a hotel or a resort manager by a certain amount of time. Or uh, you want to be able to work in other countries or you want to uh, stay in Bataan, right? Um, regardless of what you want for yourself, I think uh, when I share these top three tips, and in, in my case, uh, with all of my presentations with Jobs180.com events, um, you know, a lot of the speakers have given a lot of, you know, very important points. So in my case, I'll just be giving three points, right? So when you think about your career journey, don't think of it as different segments. I hindi kasi ako natuloy sa tourism or I hindi ako na sa education. You shouldn't see it that way, but rather look at it as one whole journey, right? And throughout that journey, what in essence you're trying to do is really trying to find out what fits best. What are you most passionate about, right? Because again, you know, in EY, and I'll be sharing a lot of uh, what EY and EY GDS Philippines has been able to accomplish locally here, right? Uh, we've been fortunate enough in, you know, the five years that we've celebrated here in the Philippines, we've grown from, you know, the previous 250 when I joined back in 2016, and I'll be celebrating my fifth year in the, uh, December of this year, right? Uh, we were just around 250 employees, but now we've grown to over 4,000 employees. And this is just, you know, a very, very small part of the EY Global Headcount. EY Global Headcount as of 2021, uh, we have already hit 312,000. So that's more than a quarter million employees working worldwide. And I think that's the um, unique opportunity. And there are always avenues, you know, whether you're a tourism graduate, whether you're an education graduate, whether you're an accounting or cybersecurity, uh, you know, uh, uh, technology graduate, there are you know, openings, there are opportunities for you available in EY. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Now, in my case, I'm the location lead for talent development. And one of the things that, you know, uh, we have been very, very keen to really pursue is really, you know, your learning. How can your learning best fit your career journey? And that's why uh, when we take a look at our overall distribution, right, uh, as I mentioned, in EY, GDS, Global Delivery Services, right? Um, we provide services both directly to client and other EY offices. And in particular, Manila alone, we've hit our 4,000 headcount this November. So despite the challenges of the pandemic, despite, you know, the Philippines having uh, the, you know, the long running record of one of the longest running quarantine, you know, statuses, uh, whether we're in, you know, uh, quarantine level, uh, level one, two, or the more restrictive ECQ, you know, just a couple of months ago, right? Uh, we've continued to grow. And I think that's a testament to uh, not just the, you know, uh, the decisions that our leaders have made, but more importantly, it's also a testament to how, and that's one of the points I'll be sharing to everyone in a little bit, right? Um, how, when you make your choice, what company do you first apply to? What career plan do you uh, pursue? You know, one of the biggest consideration, uh, considerations that you also need to take a look at is what are the values of the company? And the speaker, you know, uh, prior to me also mentioned that, you know, when you do your research, right, what is the company values? What is the company track record? Right? So those are important things to take a look at, especially if, you know, whether sooner or later in your career path, you uh, find yourself having to reroute or having to rethink or even, you know, just explore other options, right? And so when we take a look at uh, GDS Philippines in particular, um, these are the different services. So from a client servicing perspective, we do hire, you know, assurance graduates, uh, people from an accounting background, business, uh, business uh, background, right? But aside from that, we're also, you know, uh, recruiting for people, and I'll talk more about those uh, current openings that we have uh, at the end of my presentation. But it really covers a whole range of services, whether it's like, for example, if you take a look at our enablement services, uh, our BMC, this is our brand marketing and creative scene. Uh, we also employ 
creatives, right? People who are knowledgeable about web page design, social media marketing, right? Uh, especially during the time of the pandemic, one of the things that we've seen uh, really increase exponentially has been the use of uh, social media to reach clients, to reach, you know, new clients, whether it be your online selling or even uh, international businesses, right? Uh, and also recruitment. So when we take a look at uh, how uh, global delivery services is set up, there's a wide range of services. And again, you know, uh, whether or not the openings are there for your particular expertise or the, that particular career you're looking for, it never hurts to inquire. It never hurts to explore. And I think that uh, that was one of the biggest. And, you know, I continue to discuss, you know, talk to other people from different locations, from different industries, all throughout this time of the pandemic. And that's one of the things that, you know, they've realized before, maybe prior to the pandemic, they had this, you know, idea, oh, I'm going to go to Manila. I'm going to go into one of these big offices. I'm going to, you know, be in the office from, you know, 8 a.m. to, right, 8 p.m. or whatever, <laughs> whatever the case may be, right? Uh, but with the pandemic, with people having to, you know, travel because they needed to be with their families, right? Uh, people having been laid off of work and now having to rethink, oh, what's next for me? Um, this pandemic time really has provided, you know, a, a step back for employees. And now that, you know, again, you know, vaccination rates are up, we're seeing uh, the numbers in terms of infection rates continuously going down. And so the employers now at this point are also uh, talking about and discussing what's the future of work. And I'll share uh, some of the more interesting insights. And this is based off of EY Global Surveys, right? Uh, we've conducted surveys across, you know, 16,000 employees in over 700 different companies, right? We've also inquired and conducted uh, studies and surveys with you know more than a thousand employers and these are uh, either clients or industry partners that we've been working with right so when we take a look at uh, and this is going back to each and every one of us right um, when we take a look at how you should be approaching your career should you be um, taking a look at it from a traditional perspective or if i've taken up tourism then it's tourism dapat yung path ko or if I've taken up education, then it's education. If it's engineering, engineering. If it's accountancy, then again, I'll be an accountant. I'll be in uh, audit, etc. Right? Uh, but I think you know the key question, and this is you know something that I'd like to challenge each and every one of you to think about. Right? Uh, when you think about your career, right? Is it you know which one is more important? Is it more important to be dedicated, to have that hyper laser focus, or is it more important to be creative? Uh, let me share. For example, when you talk about you know professional skills, uh, when you talk about photography, right? Again, you know product shots. Uh, when you take a look at dedication, yes, it's great. You know if you're able to buy the equipment, uh, you know. Uh, 50,000 uh, 50, peso camera, you buy that 15,000 lens, you buy that, you know, uh, 5,000 diffuser, right? So you don't have, like in my case, you know, I am using the, the ring light and this is just, you know, a home, home studio setup, right? So that you don't have those, you know, annoying reflections. Um, and again, you know, having that, you know, buying that, you know, very expensive fur carpet so that you can have a very good backdrop, right? Again, it's, you know, having dedicated resources, right? Having, uh, you know, a large amount of money in order to dedicate to a particular task. It's great. And it can give you, you know, uh, very meaningful product shots like this, diba? So just looking at it, uh, mas maingganyo ka talagang bumili, right? But again, you know, what happens if you don't have the resources? What happens if, for example, if you're looking at the uh, old paradigm, diba? Uh, a lot of people, the reason why they, you know, migrate, they move to urban cities or to urban areas is because they perceive that employment, you know, employment uh, opportunities are more available there. But, you know, again, this is where I think uh, both from an employee, you know, perspective and even an employer, being creative, uh, you know, creates those opportunities to have those impacts, to 
create those you know very significant results without having to dedicate as much resources so in this case you know would it would it surprise you to know that this shot was actually taken just from this right so you think you know, professional camera setup professional lighting setup uh you know expensive but it could be just as simple as you know taking a picture of your cat of your pet right so as you can see being creative can potentially give you a lot more results compared to being dedicated and i think that's in a very good mindset uh, to also look at and take when it comes to thinking about your career uh, be creative don't lock out opportunities don't be afraid to explore uh, um, for example you know nowadays and this is you know a reality of uh, the pandemic right and that's why uh, the three tips that i have for all of you is this right so when you think about your career plans i already talked about that uh, earlier but don't think of it as i hindi ako nakapag tourism eh. hindi ako nakapag uh, sa resort so i won't be able to highlight but think of your every experience whether you're in work or you're doing you know uh, community work all of that contributes to your career contributes to your life experiences right so first off is you know identify what skills do you need uh what is it that you're most interested in because again you know when you think about uh ano ba yung common experience natin? what is it that we all uh go through diba? and it's as simple as you know what we're most passionate about is usually what we're most interested in right what you're most passionate about is the things that people are usually the most interested in so case in point you know during this pandemic time uh, some of you may have taken up you know uh cooking at home right and you found maybe you found that you had a passion for it so think about the amount of time resources that you put in to learn more about that passion wala naman nagbabayad sa inyo diba to learn more about cooking but because you had that passion because it was of interest to you. You went out of your way to devote time, to devote energy, to devote resources to learning more about that. And that's the same thing. When we take a look at the skills, and later I'll make the distinction between transferable and non-transferable skills. Um, it's also just as important to not just look at uh, ano yung kailangan mong matutunan eh, but rather what are you also interested in? What are you most passionate about? Right? And second, okay, and the second tip that I'll share with everyone is this. Look at what development paths the companies provide to help you follow through that passion project, that, you know, those things that you're passionate about, that work that you're interested in, the skills that uh, you're looking to learn more about and to hone, right? Uh, because again, you know, uh, with this pandemic, some of you may have realized, oi, pwede naman palang... Uh, magdo ng remote work, you know. Uh, in the case of EY, GDS Philippines, we've been very fortunate, like what I mentioned, right? Um, over the course of the past, you know, almost two years now at this point, right? Uh, we've onboarded more than uh, 1,700 individuals. And these individuals are not just uh, situated in Metro Manila or in NCR plus bubble, right? Um, we have employees, uh, who are located and who are currently working out as far off as Ilocos, right? Ilocos Norte. And we have employees as far down south as Davao and Zamboanga. So when you take a look at that 4,000 headcount, right? The reality that we have, and because we want to leverage not just on, you know, the talent, the mga tao na available dito sa NCR, right? Um, but even across different areas, across different regions in the country. So we've gone ahead and dedicated and created that infrastructure, diba? So that regardless of where you are, you can potentially have that, uh, you know, uh, possibility, right, to contribute to EY. Right? And that's why right now, when we take a look at the numbers, you know, if we break down that 4,000 headcount, uh, that, you know, breaks down to around 60% of our staff are within the NCR plus region, right? Um, so that's Metro Manila and uh, the nearby provinces. 
Uh, and that means that we have anywhere from 35 to 38 percent of our workforce, right, uh, that are currently outside of Metro Manila. And so as we go into 2022, right, where we have more and more companies uh, that are now, you know, having people report back to work, we're also having to reevaluate. But again, having hired people outside of Metro Manila uh, shows the commitment that EYGDS Philippines has in terms of, you know, pursuing that ongoing discussion. Uh, is it a hybrid working model that we'll look at, you know, two days in office, three days at home? Uh, for those that are within the range of our offices in Manila, because at this point, uh, we only have our main office building in uh, Taguig, right? Uh, and how about for those that are outside of Metro Manila? Again, that's going to be an ongoing discussion, but having hired them in the first place already shows a level of commitment to having an expanded reach, having that expanded scope, right? And that's something that, again, you know, is uh, born out of the company's values. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit when we explore point number two. So what's the last tip that I have when you, th when you talk about, you know, having to reroute or having to consider other career paths other than, you know, what is traditionally uh, attached or what is traditionally attributed to your course, right? So the third one is really, uh, is this. What added value can you bring to the companies while you're learning your needed skills? Because at the end of the day, right, when you have those virtual interviews, when you uh, look at, you know, your previous experiences, right, uh, again, what I mentioned before, you know, being creative versus being dedicated. It's great if you're able to dedicate, if you have enough time, resources to wait until, uh, you know, you have that opening in your dream company or a company that's related into your field, right? But some of us don't have that luxury and we recognize that. Some of you might think, ay, kailangan ko kasi tanggapin to dahil kailangan namin ng income sa house. Right? And that's where, you know, I said earlier, don't look of, don't look at it as, ay, sige, hindi ko na lang isasama to sa resume kasi hindi naman siya related. In anything that you do, whether it's, you know, in a job, in a different industry, whether it's even, you know, doing volunteer work, right? Nowadays, as we go into 2022, um, as we go into our election season, there's a lot of calls for volunteers, right? Uh, whether it be for, you know, uh, social services, whether it be for, you know, uh, lo your local community initiatives, right? Uh, whether it be for election-related uh, related activities. Um, all of those provide opportunities to pick up skills, right? And those skills can be highlighted when you do your interviews. So when we take a look at it, right? And when we take a look at the identified skills, right? <clears throat> One of the things that we need to take a look at is really uh, what can you highlight? Right? What happens if you have to divert? What happens if you have to take this, you know, immediate work opportunity, but it might not be related or might not be directly related to that, you know, industry, to that career path you have for yourself. Right? And that's where I think you, you have to take a look at it from the transferable, non-transferable skills. Um, with the pandemic, right? Uh, with people onboarding. Uh, one of the things that you know, a lot of companies have seen is that uh, they cannot afford to be picky. Right? A lot of companies, given you know restrictions on travel, given restrictions on movements, given restrictions even in uh, the capacity or maximum capacity of office space, you know, maybe an office that used to hold like 2,000 people because of social distancing guidelines now has to uh, you know, prepare and plan to only have 1,500. So that's 500 headcount you know, deduction. So where do they put it? And that's where people now have to take a look at uh, you know, flexible working arrangements, work from home, or hybrid working arrangements, two days in office, three days from home, right? Or do rotations even. But all throughout that, uh, companies have also began to feel what we call you know, uh, the war for talent. Right? And you'll be hearing that and you'll be reading that in a lot of international publications. Eh? When you go into the uh, internet, when you take a look at Facebook, when you take a look at, you know, uh, for those of you that have uh, already set up your link, 
LinkedIn profiles, right? Uh, that's an ongoing international discussion, not just here in the Philippines, but even globally. So when we take a look at that, between these two, non-transferable and transferable skills, there's now a more, uh, you know, more enhanced focus on transferable skills. So what's the difference? So first off, when you think of any work, let's say, let's take a look at tourism, right? Um, you have non-transferable skills. So specific, like uh, maybe uh, you're operating the machinery in the kitchen. Maybe it's a, a specific model. That's an example of a non-transferable skill to a system. Let's say you're in a tax or in accounting. The type of computer programs that a company uses, that's an example of a non-transferable skills. Meaning if you leave that resort, if you leave that company, um, what you know about that system may not be applicable or may not be uh, as useful when you transfer to a new company, right? Now, when you look at transferable skills, and this is where uh, what I was saying earlier comes into play, right? Any experience, any situation, any uh, activity that you engage in actually has the opportunity for you to learn these transferable skills. What's an example? Project management. Right? It could be as simple as, uh, you know, we're coming into our December season already, you know, in just uh, six more days, right? Uh, and so maybe a lot of you are planning family reunions, virtually or otherwise, right? So again, those are opportunities for you to learn valuable project management skills. How's that? First off, what platform do you use? Do you use, uh, you know, uh, Facebook meetings or Facebook events so that you can uh, organize? Sino yung pupunta, sino yung hindi? Uh, what platform are you going to put it on? Who is going to be organizing online games bayan or physical games? Is it, you know, uh, who's going to be bringing food? Right? From start to finish, from before the event, during the event, and even after the event, right? Like, kunare, maybe uh, you bought souvenirs and so you now have to do post, you know, activity collection from your friends or relatives. All those are part of project management skills. Right? Uh, what are other, you know, areas? Maybe you volunteered for a community outreach program, right? This, uh, this Christmas, you know, some of the church and civic groups uh, sometimes they create, you know, mga Christmas packages. Maybe you volunteer for that. Again, those are opportunities for you to learn community building, networking, di ba? May nakalala ka. How did you build and, you know, nurture those relationships even after the event? Those are very valuable skills, right? And all it takes is now just a shift of, di ba? Setting. From before, maybe it's a family event, but now when you look at it, from a company perspective, when you're arranging a company event, like, you know, year-end, uh, year-end program, it's not much, you know, the elements are not much different compared to that family gathering that you organize. So the experiences, yung learnings na nakuha mo doon, can just as easily be applied to a company setting. And that's where I think, you know, uh, when you're doing interviews, when you're thinking about how can I be more confident about uh, you know, applying or about interviewing. Look at it that all of your life experiences, mula pagkabata hanggang sa certain point na to, all of those can be applied. So it's just a matter of, upper, you know, are you able to find the right perspective? Are you able to go through your past, go through your activities? Even school-based activities are a good way for you to learn. Like, for example, Microsoft 360. Maybe uh, during the pandemic, uh, some of you had to uh, collaborate on your thesis papers remotely. So, ano nangyari ito? Maybe you had to learn Microsoft 360, how to do SharePoint, how to uh, make online collaborative documents that anyone can, you know, come in, edit without it having to, uh, ay, hindi ko muna ma-edit kasi in-edit pa ni ng isang team member ko, right? But rather, all five of you or all six of you being able to work on that same document all at once, right? So again, all those are opportunities. That's why, you know, the tip for this is really uh, increase whenever possible your transferable skills because whatever industry you find yourself in, yung transferable skills nyo, madadala nyo yan. You'll be able to use it. You'll be able to apply it. So same thing in my case, you know, when I did that shift, ba, from uh, volunteer work to the academy, 
two BPO, two shared services uh, uh, within financial services, right? And now two professional uh, professional services, right? Uh, with EYGDS Philippines, all those experiences I'm able to take with me because I know what helps, right? Maybe a conflict that I help resolve in, you know, sa community, may nag away na uh, fisher folk. Because when I was doing volunteer work, I was the point person for a Catholic school in Bulan Sorsogon with the local community for their outreach programs, right? So again, those are opportunities for us to learn these valuable transferable skills, right? Now, when it comes to, uh, you know, the industry, and this is before we go into our second point, right, uh, which is really um, looking at the companies and what do they afford. The reason why that is so important to learn about is because again, you know, with the pandemic, and this is based off of uh, an EY study, right? Uh, the EY study was conducted across a thousand, more than a thousand companies. And these companies range from, you know, uh, companies that had less than 1,000 headcount, all the way to companies that had more than 15,000 employees, right? And so when you think about it, and when you look at uh, the employer versus employee perspective, there are, you know, some items that are in alignment, right? Uh, case in point, for example, you know, culture and productivity. Uh, employers tend to be more positive than employees with respect to company culture and productivity. So what does this mean? Um, companies, you know, during this pandemic, and this is based off of a September 2021 survey uh, that EY did and released, right? Um, there's still that gap, right? uh, Companies are saying that, you know, we've been able to change and gotten better, but only 48% of employees believe that company culture had actually changed and gotten better, right? So these are important parts to consider. Um, next mar uh, major item and major finding from that is flexibility is the new normal. So don't feel uh, constrained that I, when I'm applying and you know the company says, oh, you have to report to work, you have to relocate, you have to travel, right? Uh, again, you know, the reality of it is that uh, companies nowadays also have to consider flexibility, the requirements. So for example, 80% um, 80, 80 of employers agree on the need to provide future flexibility. So they recognize that, right? But only 40%. So kalahati lang dun sa mga nagsabi na, yes, important na mag-consider tayo ng flexible working arrangement, that we should consider hybrid working arrangements. But only half of them have communicated this, right? And so from the employee expectation perspective, you have 90%, almost all employees entering the workplace, whether it's uh, existing employees or even new employees, right? And so when we take a look at that, um, it provides an opportunity to have a more active conversation. So what's important? When you take a look at these companies that you're considering, you know, you can look at it in the context of, you know, um, are they waiting? Are they still, you know, uh, on that couch? Diba? They're waiting to see. Ano ba yung kalalabasan, diba? Will we be able to have zero cases na and everything go back to our new normal, right? There are some companies that are still in the planning now stage, right? And some that have already action. They've considered it, they've thought about it, and now they've acted and communicated it. And as you can see, um, depending on where that company is at, is it on the waiting stage, is it on the planning stage, or is it they've already done action, the employees also now communicate very strongly. Those that have already action they have higher scores in terms of culture outcome and productivity, right? Uh, versus, you know, companies that are still in the planning now or even waiting, right? Now, what's the tip then, right? And I'll go to my second tip, right? When you think about the development paths, there's two things that you need to consider. So first off, what development paths are available in the company? And this is directly related to, uh, to that first point, right? which is, what are you passionate about? What are the skills that you want to be able to pick up? Because again, you know, maybe uh, during this pandemic time, uh, you realize that, ay, gusto ko rin palang magtayo ng business kasi I had like maybe a friend or a relative that set up a business. And so far, it's been very successful and I want to be able to replicate that. 
It's just that maybe kulang pa. Kulang pa yung skills. Hindi pa ka marunong mag-manage ng uh, expenses. Hindi pa ka marunong mag-manage ng networking. Diba? How do I uh, create a strong social media presence? You know, uh, Do I have to do TikTok accounts? Diba? Uh, and and you know, similar actions, right? So again, companies provide development. And uh, one of the things that were takeaways from this pandemic season, and this was also, again, uh, mirrored in the survey that EY did with those global companies, right, uh, was that uh, development paths have to be varied. Hindi lang siya related sa work. And that's the same case with EY, right? Um, we don't just focus on what people need to learn to do their jobs, but also we provide opportunities for people to pursue what they're most passionate about, what they're most, you know, interested in, right? That's why when you look at, you know, these companies, right, uh, whether they were on the waiting, they're planning, or they've already action on uh, what their future for, of work is going to be, companies with deeply rooted values make decisions based on those values, despite the circumstance. And I think this is where uh, I was saying earlier, Deba, EY uh, really did a great job in terms of preparing everyone for the pandemic. Because again, you know, you hear it a lot from uh, social media, you hear it a lot from company uh, forecasts, right? Uh, in our case, and I can personally attest to it, um, that's one of the things that, you know, I love about EY. And that's why I'm very passionate and I actively go on, you know, venues like this to talk about my experience in EY. So prior to the pandemic, EY already had issued laptops to all employees. Uh, was it because we were, you know, forecasting, ay, baka magkaroon tayo ng issue, di ba? No. The reason was because EY wanted people to work dynamically with one another. Prior to the pandemic, we were already practicing uh, no uh, assigned workstations. Why? Because in my case, uh, for our Tagig office, I'm located on the 16th floor. What if I was working with a project with somebody in consulting on the 17th floor? It doesn't make sense for me and that person to, you know, keep on booking meeting rooms or, sige, punta ako dyan or punta ako dito, right? And so even prior to the pandemic, we already had laptops. We already had um, non-reserved working stations because that was the company culture. That was the value, right? We, we wanted people to be able to have that energy and enthusiasm and the courage to lead. So if I needed to book a station beside that person I was working on, uh, working with, right, I could do that. So when the pandemic came, because EY had already set that you know, foundation, right, it allowed us to be very flexible and to change very quickly and adapt very quickly to the situation. March 15, 2020, uh, quarantine, you know, quarantine announcements came out. March 30 of that same year, we were already able to start our first virtual onboarding, right? And again, that was because uh, we had the right attitude, we had the right mindset, we had the right uh, supporting infrastructure. And I think that's what you have to consider when you're looking at what company to apply to. Diba? Ano ba yung values nila? Ano ba yung naging track record nila? Ano ba yung nagiging focus nila in terms of their employees? Are they focused on developing their employees, both from a personal and a professional level, right? And so when we think about it, right, and uh, further proof of it, right, uh, when we look at, and this is based off of the survey, uh, there's a lot of focus really on digital tools and technology, right? Making people comfortable with tools, with that technology, and making sure that those are available to everyone. So in the case of EY, yes, we have that. You know, We've been working and we've been having all of our events, even onboarding technical soft skills training. We've been conducting everything uh, virtually, right? Uh, the largest group that I've onboarded recently, and this was just November 8 and 9, we had over 197 new hires that we onboarded simultaneously at the same time, right? And that, of course, is, you know, only possible through digital technology. But something that I share with them, right, and we'll go th through that in, uh, in the next few slides, uh, what if people are interested in other things? Can they learn more about that? And the answer for us, at least in EY, is yes, they can. 
So what's an example? So EY has a lot of vendor alliances, and I'll focus one on particular. You have Udemy for Business, right? Udemy is one of the largest online providers for learning content. Some of you may even have seen some of the you know uh, presentations that they had there, right? And so when we take a look at it, uh, for example, in EY, we allow people to actually go ahead and uh, you know take up business development. And this is you know for example, what if you're in tax? Oh, you have more than three th more than two thousand courses available, right? What if you wanted to learn more about you know uh, digital marketing? Again, right? it that has nothing to do with you work more in assurance in audit, but here in EY we're providing it for free, and really that's an example and you know a testament to how uh, EY really provides that support. And lastly, when we take a look at it, and I, I know uh, we're going a little bit over time already, and thank you so much for your patience as well. Um, when we take a look at the EY badges, regardless of where you're at, you can actually learn more about these badges. Uh, maybe I'm in talent, but I can learn more about cybersecurity. And this is further you know, built up on with EY uh, launching, and this was as of 2020. We actually launched our first postgraduate degree, and this is supported by um, Halt International Business School, right? And these are two postgraduate degrees that EY is providing for all employees, regardless of whether you started today, whether you've been in EY for 10 years or three years or even 25 years, it's all available already and for free, right? And I think that's where really uh, when we look at uh, the openings, and I'll talk about uh, the openings available in EY. Um, it's really all about, you know, uh, the current openings that we have to date are in the fields of assurance, tax, right? Uh, we also have openings for consulting and core business services. But beyond that, we want you to just go ahead and take that, you know, opportunity, take that leap to check out what are those options available. Because at the end of the day, um, we want to ensure that, you know, your ambition, your dreams and aspirations is as bold as ours. So we want you to really strongly consider uh, applying and even, you know, inquiring in EY what could be possible for you. Because, you know, again, we have over 4,000 employees now to date that are exploring and developing their future careers in EY. So thank you so much, Royce. Back to you. So meeting, ayan, so na-up na ayan. So, thank you so much, sir, um, Dennis. Okay, so um, since um, for tayo ng time po, so I'll be asking yes. two questions lang din po. So same with FactSet po kanina. So for those who are going to submit their applications po to EY, so what are the ano po, things to expect po when it comes to their mm -hmm. job search during this pandemic? Since ibang-iba siya po, um, I guess you know what's important is you know diba, for uh the applicants but for the students to look at ano ba yung mga transferable skills nila, diba? maybe they were a student leader some mga activities so that in itself can set you up for let's say maybe a uh, work in HR diba? kasi magaling kang makipag sa tao right um uh maybe it's an interest in cybersecurity right uh like let's say for example ikaw yung madalas na nagsasabi sa house ninyo na oh umiwas kayo wag kayong uh like right now diba usong-uso yung mga text na oh gam gamit mo lang cellphone mo pwede kang kumita ng 5000 6000 no click on this link right so again even those things um can help you uh, look at, you know, uh, maybe pursuing a career in different industries. And right now, what we're seeing in EY is even for you, my fresh graduates, even graduates that may not be coming from that uh, specific course, we're already entertaining. We're looking actively for uh, where we can put them in. Uh, we've also partnered with, you know, industry partners to look at, you know, uh, workshop style programs eh, na parang oh, pagka-graduate mo or even uh, in the future with some of the campuses that we're looking to partner up with, right, um, to have courses available for them to take so that they're 
EY ready. And I think those are those are uh, avenues na talagang pwedeng i-take advantage, especially for those uh, students right now that maybe are still graduating. Look for those partnership tie-ups. Meron ba yun dun sa university nyo? Meron ba yun um, online campuses? Some uh, companies have actually opened up their online campuses to uh, outside, you know, outside staff, meaning people not of the organization. Ayan. So thank you so much, Sir Dennis. And of course, po as someone po na 17 years na sa industry. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what would be your advice po for the graduating students na, syempre, mag-start pa lang ang nilang career? Mm-hmm. Siguro yung pinaka important is yung ay eh, be resilient. Uh, in short, be yung Filipino word for it, di ba? Makunat. Pero not makunat in the sense na matipid ka lang sa pera, but rather uh, makunat in the face of adversity, in the face of challenges. Kasi it's being able to be physically and mentally healthy uh, will build you that resiliency na uh, kahit ma-decline ka, di ba? Take those as learning opportunities because even if you get declined to a company, having done your research, nag-research ka tungkol sa company niyo, that in itself is a transferable experience. Eh. Paano ka nag-research? Di ba? Nagtanong ka ba? Nag-network ka ba? Di ba? Pumunta ka ba sa company website? All those activities give you valuable skills that you can highlight for the next interview. And before you know it, di ba, ang dami mo na palang experiences na na-build up. And you can highlight during your interviews. Alright, so maraming maraming salamat po, Sir Dennis. And of course, uh, let's proceed po to the awarding of certificate. So bago kayo um, mag-proceed backstage. So to award the certificate po, so let me read the um, citation. Okay, so Bataan Peninsula State University, May, Nabukay, Bagak, Palanga, Dinalopihan, Oranis. The certificate of appreciation is given to Mr. Al Dennis Pechan as a key speaker in the pre-employment orientation virtual seminar for his phenomenal and worthy presentation on the topic, Rerouting Your Career Plan in the Pre-Employment Preparation Talk PEP 2021 for the graduating class of Bataan Peninsula State University organized by BPSU Office of the Student Affairs, Job Placement Office in collaboration with Jobs180.com given this 24th day of November 2021 at Bataan Peninsula State University, Bataan, Philippines. Signed by Dr. Emmanuel C. Macareg, PhD, Vice President for Academic Affairs, and Dr. Gregorio J. Rodis, PhD, University President. So, thank you so much, Sir Dennis. Maraming maraming salamat po for joining thank us you. today. Thank you. So we wish thank you, have thank you, you so much, Royce. On our next yes, so uh, I've been very active with the Jobs 180. I think this is my 18 uh, ah, talk right. already with Jobs 180 on it. So looking forward to even more engagements. Parang resident ano, speaker na yes. pala natin, <laughs> Sir Dennis. Uh, <laughs> I think it's for EY. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, All Sir right. Dennis. Thank you so much, everyone. Stay safe and healthy. Okay, thank you. So to know more about... um. EY, so you may visit jobs180.com slash EYGTS. Okay, you may submit your resume link if you already have your resume link. Again, you may visit jobs180.com slash EYGTS. And naka-flash po yan sa screen yung makikita niyo po siya. Okay, so let's proceed with our fourth speaker. So uh, who will talk about compensation and benefits na dapat niyong uh, malaman bago kayo mag-start. Um, uh, McGurk, okay, in your career. So, a public um, servant for more than two decades and a presidential awardee for handling labor relations, he has been a senior labor and employment from 2014 to present in the Department of Labor and Employment, Bataan. Um, the senior labor and employment officer from Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, RO3, Mr. Joselet, Joselito V. Checo. Ayan. So, okay. Take it away, sir. Our topic for today is uh, about basic uh, concepts and labor relation law. So labor relation law uh, is a vital and a useful uh, tool for you uh, students on your entry uh, upon uh, your coming to your new job. So the labor relation is about the knowledge and skills are confined to the human resource and legal department. The human resources is the heart and soul of the organization. So normally, they will be the one to balance for any disputes or for any misunderstanding between the management and the worker side. So aside from that, the front line managers and supervisors 
since they don't have awareness required to implement labor relation, uh, the, pro the productivity may suffer upon uh, their operation. So labor relation is confined to compliance with basic labor laws. So meaning uh, they should follow whatever the general labor standard is to be implemented. Uh, since lack of clear and purposive uh, effort to achieve workplace harmony, uh, normally uh, the productivity will suffer upon uh, during the workers' uh, situation. Okay, so what are the sources of the labor relation? Number one, uh, the labor relation is uh, on the labor code as amended by the Republic Act number. 6715 and its implementing rules. And then secondly, it's all about the Department of Labor and Employment Orders uh, being uh, made by the, our Secretary of Labor. And then uh, regarding the case law which are being filed on the NCMB and LRC or even in the Senate programs of the DOLE. And then uh, for you guys, when you apply for your job, normally you might encounter the contract of employment. So it is the starting point for the application of the Philippine Labor Code. So meaning it is a relation between the company and the employer. So you have to follow whatever the regulations uh, to be implemented by your employer. So upon you are in the being hired when your service rendered, uh, dapat po yan eh, merong corresponding salary na dapat isweld sa iyo. Okay, so there are different types of employees. Number one is the casual employee, which in case of perform services not usually necessary or desirable in the usual trade or business of employer. So somehow maybe they could be on a seasonal basis or a project basis. But on the provisionary, provisionary uh, employee, they are being hired to, reg to acquire a regular position after passing the provisionary period of not more than six months. So once you meet the standard, when you are six months in one day, automatic will be a regular employee. And then a regular employee is uh, engaged to perform activities usually necessary and desirable in the usual trade of business of employer. And being a regular employee, you have indefinite term and cannot be dismissed except for cause and you have the security of the tenure. So how could we be able to determine the relationship of the employee and the employer? Number one, who is the one to recruit you or to hire you? And then secondly, who is the one paying your wages? And then who has the power to dismiss and less the power to control the employee's conduct? Okay, under labor standard, ito na po yung mga naandyan na kapalo. Overtime pay, night shift differential, holiday pay, service incentive leave, the minimum wage, 13-month pay, weekly rest periods, meal and rest periods, retirement pay, maternity leave, special leave benefits for women, paternity leave, and then the social security registration and remittance certificate, and then the last is the occupational health and safety rules. So, with regards to overtime, it is an additional compensation for work performed in excess of eight hours a day. So, if you are being required to work more than an eight hours, you will going to receive an additional 20, 25% of your other rate. In excess of eight hours or during a special day, 30% uh, should be given to you for an hourly rate. But for the night shift differential, it is an additional compensation of 10% of an employee uh, for working uh, and perform between 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. So, there are some uh, exemptions, like the government employee, house helpers, managerial employees, and officers of a member of a manager's staff. 
Now, regarding the holiday pay, in the, in the Philippines, we have 12 regular holidays. That is the New Year Day, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, which is movable. Araw na Kagitingan, Labor Day, Independence Day, National Heroes Day, Sunday, last Sunday of August, Bonifacio Day, Christmas Day, Rizal Day, Edel Peter, and then Edel Adha, which is also movable. Uh, that was the Muslim holiday uh, being implemented in the Philippines. So once you work for holiday period, you're going to receive 200% of your salary. In the event that the employer uh, declare uh, during holiday no work, but if you are present before the holiday, you are entitled for 100% uh, of your salary. And then we have the special day like the Ninoy Aquino Day, uh, August 21, All Saints Day, November 1, and then the new special holiday, the Feast of Immaculate, December 8, and then the last day of the year, December 31. So, in terms of service incentive leave, uh, this pertains for every employee who has rendered at least one year of service, whether continuous or broken. He's entitled for five days, and then he may use this one for sick and vacation leave purposes. The unused leave could be computed uh, in your daily basis uh, for five days uh, times your daily rate in a year. But it depends on if you are going to use for five days, also in a, within a year, so no more uh, service incentive leave to be given to you. Okay, the minimum wage, it is the wage prescribed by law, shall be the normal working hours of eight hours a day. So, ang coverage po niya is regardless of position, designation, or status in the method by which their wages are paid. So, Bataan is uh, included in the regional uh, number three. Uh, so, for non-agri, for the establishment with 10 or more workers, our minimum wage now is for 20. For less than 10 workers is for 13, and then for agriculture uh, sector, uh, for plantation is 390, and then for the non-plantation is 374. And of course, for the retail and service with more than 10 workers, they're going to receive 409, and then for less than 10 workers should receive 395. So since Aurora is an agricultural area, uh, they are being paid in a lesser amount compared to other provinces. So the minimum wage for Aurora is 369, and then for Agri, 354, for the non plantation is 342, and for the retail service is 304. Okay? So 13 month pay is a presidential decree 851. All employees should be paid uh, at least they were able to work at least one month during a calendar year. So the last day of the payment is not later than December 24. The simple computation of the 13 month pay is your basic salary received regardless of overtime and holiday pay times the number of days divided by 12, that will be your prorated 13-month pay. And then, for the weekly rest period, for a week, you are entitled for a one day. But it depends on the nature of the business or the employer to, to give your weekly rest period, especially for those who are in working in the mall uh, during weekend, uh, they usually uh, uh, work in, uh, during weekends. So maybe it could be Thursday or Wednesday, they are going to file their weekly rest period. Now, meal and rest period, uh, there should be a one hour or 60 minutes for your regular meal. And then uh, it is compensable if you are being required to work during your meal and rest period. And then we have also the coffee break running for five to 20 minutes in the morning 
and also in the uh, afternoon, which is also compensable. Okay? So retirement pay, it is Article 287, as amended by RA 7641. So employees shall be retired upon the re reaching the age of 60 years of more or more, not beyond 65 years old. So the, this, does, this benefits does not apply to the following. Government employees, employees of retail service and agricultural establishment, or operations regularly employing not more than 10 employees. Okay, so maternity leave, uh, it pertains to all female employees, whether married or unmarried, shall be covered and be entitled of the following, 105 days, normal delivery, cesarean, or even plus 15 days with full payment in case qualifies as a solo parent under RA 8972. So to apply for solo parent, you need to report to the social welfare of your municipality. So in case of miscarriage or emergency termination of pregnancy, you are entitled for 60 days with full. And then the employee must have at least three monthly contribution in the 12 months period preceding your childbirth. So maternity should be applied to SSS. And then we have another benefits for women. So what we call RA 9710, Section 18 or the Magna Carta for women. So this refers to a female employee's leave entitlement of two months with full pay from her employer based on her gross monthly compensation following surgery caused by gynecological disorders the vagina, the cervix, uterus, ovaries, breast, adhesia, fallopian tubes, it should be certified by the physician or an ob -gyne. Okay, so for the men and man, we have the paternity leave or what we call RA number 8187. So paternity leave is granted to all married male employees in the private sector regardless of the employment status for probably regular contractual or project basis. The purpose of which is to allow the husband to lend support to his wife during the period of recovery and on the nursing of her newborn child. So he has seven days, but provided kasal po sila. They are cohabiting with his wife. So yun po yung ruling nun. So under social security registration and remittance certificate, so, kayo pa lang, uh, before you graduate, you may apply for your SSS, pag-ibig and fellowship number para pag uh, nagtrabaho na po kayo, kompleto na po kayo sa mga uh, social benefits requirements pa. And then, uh, occupational health and safety rules is very important kasi uh, it is uh, the duty of the Secretary of Labor and Employment by appropriate orders set in force mandatory occupational safety and health standards to eliminate or reduce occupational safety and health hazards in all workplace and institute new and updated existing programs to ensure safe and health working conditions in all places of employment. So napakahalaga po na yung mga tayo po nagtatrabaho tayo, especially nasa construction, yung mga PPE po, lalo na ngayon during pandemic uh, COVID-19, uh, yung ating pong, uh, health protocols, yung mga pagsusot po natin ng mga PPEs, mga yan, uh, mga masks, yung mga, yung mga protection po natin, baga alcohol, yung mga social distancing, uh, you should always uh, keep na reminding yourself or even yung sa family po natin. Okay? So, we do have the management prerogative. So, no no po ba yun? Uh, the management determines the direction and conduct of its business and regulates all aspects of employment, including the hiring, the work assignments, working methods, and of course the time, place of manner of work, tools and processes, supervision of workers, work regulation, and then the transfer of employees, discipline, dismissal, layoff, recall of employees, of the employees provided it is just, humane, equal, and not contrary to the law. So we do have the, the security of tenure. So meaning no employee can be dismissed except for cause. And what are those cause? It's either a just cause where the employee is at fault. So 
what are those uh, just causes? It could be a serious misconduct, cross and habitual neglect of duty, fraud or willful breach of trust, loss of confidence, commission of a crime, or offense by the employee and other analogous cases. So the serious misconduct, we have the example of this. Pambabastos sa employer, pangaway sa kapwa empleyado sa loob ng pinagtatrabahuan, and even yung paninira ng mga gamit sa kumpanya at mga gaway, immoral, or skandalos sa loob ng pinagtatrabahuan. And then, about the gross and habitual neglect of duty, yung negligence, yung kapabayaan po natin, and then under this provision, the neglect must be gross and habitual, meaning paulit-ulit. So, sa fraud, it is an act or omission of concealment which involves a breach of duty, trust or confidence, and which causes injury to another. So, dapat po talaga, we should be loyal. And then committed against the employer or work-related. Yan po. Yung mga example po niya, yung loss of confidence, conflict of interest, and then falsification offenses. So, commission of crime by the employee against, it, it might be the person of his employer, an immediate member of your employer's family, employer's duly authorized representative, and manager or supervisor. So, other analogous uh, causes, it is the cuts all provision for just causes. Yan po yung mga pinagsama-sama na. So, it must have an eminent similar to those found in the specific just causes enumerated, must show fault or culpability on the part of the employee. Napatunay na lang Now, we go to determination of employment process. So, of course, you should determine kung isya ba punishable or commission. And then, it will follow to the initial fact-finding to determine whether the employer uh, will impose preventive suspension or charge or not to be charged. And then, it will go to the formal investigation of the body. And then, and soon, upon a review, the decision and penalty will be imposed. And then, yan po yung mga investigation process. Alamin po yung dahilan. And then, second, mag bigay po tayo ng memo. And then, of course, the memo, uh, you need to give, to give an ample time to the workers, at least seven days, para siya po ay magbigay din ng kanya written notice explanation. And then, it will go to the formal investigation. As, uh, as it goes, the decision will be uh, given. Okay. So, so, security of tenure, when an employee is illegally terminated, he has the right to reinstatement, balik sa trabaho, and even yung kanyang back wages ay babayaran. Kung meron mga damages or attorney's fee, it will be uh, charged to the employer. If the cost is may either be authorized when the employee is not at fault but dismissal, is allowed by law. Okay. So, ito po yung mga authorized causes. Redundancy, employee position are superfluous because their work is duplicated or unnecessary. Meaning, gumamit po ng mga installation labor devices. Yung company pong uh, nag-merge and then nag-streamlining ang mga operation or even retrenchment po. Yan. Serious of eminent losses forced by the employee to let so nagbabaw sa po ng tao. And then, ito po yung masakit, closure or stop of the business. Yan po. So, pagka po authorized causes, uh, the, the, the workers is entitled for uh, separation pay. One half month salary for every year of service. And then, who can terminate? Of course, the management. The actual termination, kung constructive naman yan, is illegal na para yan. So, pwede yung iapela yan. Kung constructive ang approach. Now, uh, for the workers, uh, you could do it by your resignation. Sa resignation po, make sure you are the one who write for you the resignation. Hindi po siya nakaproforma. Okay? And then, uh, sabi rito, pwede rin daw bawin habang hindi pa tinatanggap ng management in case na magbago isip mo. Abandonment, eh, ito yung tinatawag na natin nag na dapat naman talaga maliwanag na kung ayaw mo na talaga uh, it is better na talaga you, you file for your resignation. Maklasi po ng mga ating mga kukulin as a worker. Duty to obey, dapat masunurin po tayo. Duty to exercise skill and care, magpakibihasa po tayo. The more we learn, 
mas lalo po natin magiging uh, magagamit yan sa ating pagtatrabaho. And then, duty of good faith and loyalty. So, the company rules and regulation, it is the duty of the employee na to obey and then the subjection violation of rules gives the right to employer to discipline the employee. And then, it should be reasonable. Baka mamaya na may person na lang. Then, the employee should be notified. Kung ano man yung uh, grounds o nagawa niyang pagkakamali. And then, of course, ang sources po ng mga employee termination discipline are the under the labor code is yung article 282, 283, 284. And then it could be based on your contract, kung merong unionize yan, meron silang CBA, or what we call collective bargaining agreement, and even baka naka-stipulate yun sa iyong kontrata. And then the last is the company rules and regulation. So, it is not the employer who pays the wages, but the employers only handle the money. It is the customer who pays the wages, according to Henry Ford. So, in behalf of the uh, Department of Labor Employment, to our uh, Secretary of Labor, Bebot Bellio, and of course, sa aming uh, Regional Director, Ma'am Bing Pamlelio, sa aming uh, Provincial Field Office Chief, Ma'am Lani, uh, we are very much thankful now, with our own little knowledge, we were able to imply our little uh, seminar for the seminar na I think na magagamit yun talaga. So, in case na meron pa kayong mga gustong clarification or mga kailangan pa niyong malaman, you may uh, open our website, www.dole.gov.ph or even you can text me uh, this number, 910 Four four six seven eight four six, and thank you guys for listening and watching to this uh, presentation. I hope you will uh, uh, this uh, will be uh, an aid for you for your new career of life. Thank you and good day. All right, so thank you so much, Sir Joselito. Okay, so um, due to intermittent connection, um, hindi na po natin makasama si Sir Joselito for the Q&A. But if you have questions, guys, um, iwan nyo lang po sa comment section and then we'll try to ask Sir Jose kahit offline yan. So habulin natin yan dole para if you have questions, matatanong natin sila. Okay, so let's proceed na po with the, I, I'm sorry, awarding of certificate. So kahit wala siya, of course, we'll still award po the certificate to Sir Jose. Okay, so let me read for the citation. So again, but Antonin Sula State University, may nabukay bagak pala nga dinalupihan aran. The Certificate of Appreciation is given to Mr. Joselito V. Diego as a key speaker in the pre-employment orientation virtual seminar for his phenomenal and worthy presentation on the topic Compensation and Benefits. In the pre-employment preparation talk, Feb 2021 for the graduating class of Bataan Peninsula State University organized by PPSE Office of the Student Affairs, Job Placement Office in collaboration with Department of Labor and Employment Bataan given this 24th day of November 2021 at Bataan Peninsula State University, Bataan, Philippines. Signed by Dr. Emmanuel C. Macaraeg, PhD Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dr. Gregoria J. Rodis, PhD, the University President. Thank you so much for joining us today, um, Mr. Joselito Vidiek. Thank you so much po. Okay, so next po to talk about employment programs and services. So with extensive human resource generalist background for more than 18 years, currently leading two departments po for the city government as head licensing, licensing officer and city of Banga public employment service office department head, the city government department head one of public employment services office, Mr. Noriel D. Deshawn. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Good morning. And so, haba na sa so, akala ko after nun na, no? Okay. Masayang araw, mga kasama. Hayaan niyo simulan ko ang programang ito sa pagbati sa inyo ng advance congratulations para sa nalalapit yung pagtatapos sa susunod na taon. Ngayong araw, pag-uusapan natin ang mga programa na maaaring makatulong sa inyo sa paghahanda para sa World of Work. Unahin natin ang pagpapakilala ng aming opisina ng Public Employment Service Office o mas kilala sa pangalang PESO. Ano nga ba ang PESO? Ang PESO ay isang ahensya na matatagpuan sa inyong lokal na pamahalaan na kung saan 
Ito ay nagbibigay ng libreng serbisyo tulad ng employment services at ilang mga programa na mula sa Department of Labor and Employment o DOLE. Ito ay tinuturing na one-stop service center na naglalayong magbigay ng employment information at mga manpower program and services mula sa DOLE at ilang mga government agencies na may kinalaman sa paglinang ng kasanayan at pagbibigay trabaho sa ating mga kababayan. Saan nga ba matatagpuan ang peso? Ito ay makikita sa inyong mga local government units, mga non-government organizations, pati na rin sa mga school, universities, and colleges. Ano naman ang layunin ng aming tanggapan? Una, ang magbigay ng mabilis at epektibong employment programs and services na abot hanggang sa grassroots level. Dinitiyak ng aming opisina na ang mga programa ay makakarating hanggang sa pinakalaylayan ng ating lipunan. Pangalawa, kami rin ang nagsisilbing tagapaghatid ng mga programa mula sa DOLE tulad halimbawa na lang ng mga emergency employment programs like TUPAD o tulong pangkabuhayan sa ating disadvantaged displaced workers na nawala ng hanap buhay sa panahon ng pandemya. Pangatlo, naatasan din ang peso na mag-organize ng mga activity na magbibigay ng oportunidad sa ating mga kababayan na makahanap ng trabaho tulad ng pagsasagawa ng job fair, local recruitment activity, special recruitment activity, or overseas employment opportunity at livelihood program. Pang-apat, ang patuloy na pagkakaroon ng malawak na komunikasyon sa iba't ibang peso sa probinsya maging sa ibang rehiyon upang makatulong sa pagbibigay ng trabaho sa ating mga mamamayan. Maraming proyekto ang maaaring ibaba ng mga munisipyo sa pamamagitan ng peso para patuloy na makatulong sa mga job seekers na katulad nyo. Isa na dito ay ang Employment Referral Services. Mayroong tatlong uri ito. Ang una ay ang Wage Employment Facilitation. Ito ay ang pagbibigay ng assistance upang kayo ay makahanap ng trabaho mapalokal man o abroad. Ang susunod ay ang tinatawag na Self-Employment and Livelihood Facilitation. Ito naman ay pagbibigay ng puhunan sa tulong pa rin ng dole at ng inyong lokal na pamahalaan upang kayo ay magkaroon ng panimula para sa mga naising niyong negosyo. Maaring ibigay ito sa mga grupo tulad ng asosyasyon, kooperatiba at mga federasyon. At ang huli ay ang employability enhancement o training. Marami na sa ating mga kababayan ang nagtagumpay dahil sa kanilang mga bagong natutunang kasanayan sa pamamagitan ng technical vocational training na libing ibinibigay ng TESDA. Ang peso ay maaaring ding magbigay ng referral sa mga TVIs o sa mga eskwelahang tumatanggap ng mga vocational skills training o sa mga training centers ng TESDA sa ating probinsya. Ang mga kasanayang inyong matututunan ang siya namang magbibigay daan upang kayo ay magkaroon ng bagong kaalaman sa pagtatrabaho tulad ng welding, carpentry, instrumentation, at marami pang iba. Maari nyo rin magamit ang mga kasanayang ito sa pagtatayo ng inyong sariling negosyo tulad halimbawa na lang ng pagsasanay sa cookery, bread and pastry, at iba pa. Sa panig naman ng TESDA, ipinagmamalaki nito ang maigting na pagpapalawig ng mga programang tutuon sa pagkakaroon ng dekalidad ng graduates ng tech voc courses sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng assessment at certification sa mga ito. Sa kasulukuyan, ay marami na ang kumpanya na naghahanap ng certification ng TESDA bago tumanggap ng mga aplikante sa trabaho. Ang PESO ay nagsasagawa din ng Recruitment Assistance for Employers. Ito ay upang bigyang tulong ang mga kumpanya na makahanap ng mga empleyado. Sa pamamagitan nito, nakakatulong din kami na magbigay ng mga potential employees dahil sa mga resume at online profile ng mga job seekers na meron ng aming tanggapan. Nagsasagawa kami ng job matching batay sa pangangailangan ng kumpanya. Naglalag din kami ng araw para mag-conduct ng local recruitment activity para sa mga lokal na trabaho o special recruitment activity para naman sa trabaho abroad. Kaya makakasigurado kayo na ang mga job vacancies ay totoo at dumaan sa tamang proseso sa POEE para naman sa mga trabaho sa iba yung dagat. Sa pakikipag-ugnayan sa mga schools, universities, and colleges, ang peso ay maaaring ding magbigay ng employment information and guidance services tulad halimbawa na lang ng ginagawa natin ngayon. 
may mga iba't ibang pwedeng pagpilihan ng mga job seekers kung ano ang kanilang nais na tahakin. Una, ang local employment opportunities. O ito yung mga trabaho na meron dito sa ating probinsya maging sa iba't ibang panig ng bansa. Pangalawa, overseas employment prospect. Ito naman ay mga nagnanais na magtrabaho sa labas ng bansa. Pangatlo, self-employment ventures. Kung ang nais nice naman ng isang individual na magtayo ng sariling negosyo at makatulong na makapag-empleyo ng mga magagawa, ito naman ang maaari niyong tahapin. At ang huli, ang employability enhancement o training. Kung halimbawa naman ang nais nice upang magkaroon ng karagdagang kasanayan na po pwede niyong magamit sa paghahanap ng trabaho o sa pagbuo ng sarili niyong negosyo, ito ang isang hakbang na maaari niyong gawin upang mas malinang pa ang inyong kasanayan at magamit pa sa mas produktibong pamamaraan para maiangat pa ang inyong kabuhayan. Sa nakaraang buwan, maraming Pilipino ang nabiktima ng illegal recruitment sa bansa. Karamihan sa mga biktima nito ay ang mga dating OFW na naghahangad na magkatrabaho sa ibang bansa para makatulong sa kanilang mga pamilya upang maiahon to sa kahirapan. Upang hindi maging biktima ng illegal recruitment at human trafficking ang mga naghahanap ng trabaho, may mga pamamaraan upang maiwasan ito. Mahalagang alamin ang status at lisensya ng replacement agency at iyaking kung ito ay lihitimo bago mag-apply. Ngayong araw, ilalahad natin ang iba't ibang pamamaraan upang matiyak kung lihitimo ang recruitment agency bago mag-apply ng trabaho abroad. Narito ang ilang mga paalaala para makaiwas sa illegal recruitment. Una, huwag mag-a-apply sa ahensya na hindi lisensyado ng POEA. Maaari niyong bisitahin ang website ng Philippine Overseas Employment Administration or POEA upang makatiyak na autorisado ang mga placement agency na inyong a-applyan. Dito niyo rin makikita kung halimbawang may paglabag ang ahensya sa mga paduntunan na pinatutupad ng POEA. Sa pamamagitan nito, makakaiwas na kayo sa mga hindi lihitong kumpanya na nagkaalok ng trabaho abroad. Pangalawa, huwag tumanggap ng alok na trabaho sa mga ahensya na walang job order. Magtanong sa POEA. Katulad ng unang nabanggit, o pwede nyo rin makita kung nakarehistro sa POEA ang mga job order or job vacancies na inalok sa ibang bansa. Pangatlo, Huwag makikipag-ugnayan kanino man na hindi autorisadong empleyado ng isang lisensyadong ahensya. Kalimitan, ito ang nagiging madalas na dahilan kung bakit marami sa atin ang nabibiktima ng illegal recruiter. Sila ang mga taong nagpapanggap na empleyado o konektado sa isang placement agency. Kung kaya't, marami sa kanila ang nakakahikayat sa mga tao na maglabas ng pera bilang paunang bayad sa pag-apply ng trabaho abroad. Pangapat, Huwag makikipag-transaksyon sa labas ng rehistradong adres ng ahensya. Kung nagre-recruit sa probinsya, alamin kung ito ay may special recruitment authority. Dito na pumapasok ang malaking role ng peso dahil isa kami sa mga nagsasagawa ng verification upang matiyak na lihitimo at legal ang mga recruitment dito sa ating probinsya. Nakikipag-ugnayan kami sa mga overseas placement agency, pati na sa POEA, upang matiyak ang kaligtasan ng mga manggagawa. Kaya, kung makakakita kayo ng recruitment sa labas ng mga munisipyo, siguraduhin lamang na may tamang koordinasyon ito sa lokal na pamahalaan sa pamamagitan ng peso at hanapin ang special recruitment authority na ini-issue ng POEA. Panlima, Huwag magbabahid ng placement fee na hihigit sa kagnubas ng isang buwang sahod. Ayon sa batas, kinakailang hindi hihigit sa isang buwang sahod ang inyong placement fee. Pero syempre, hiwalay pa dito ang bayad sa documentation cost like passport, NBI, PSA at mga medical. Pang-anin, huwag magbabayad ng placement fee kung walang ibibigay na resibo o kontrata sa pagtatrabaho. Dahil ito ang inyong magiging matibay na ebidensya na kayo ay legal na nag-apply at nagbayad sa kanilang ahensya. Papito, huwag agad maniwala sa mga anunsyo o babasahin ng tatagubilin na ipadala ang inyong mga sagot sa P.O. Box na may kasamang pambayad sa pagpuproseso ng mga papeles. Marami na sa atin ang nabiktima ng ganitong modus. Kung kaya't, huwag na huwag tayo magbibigay ng mga importanteng dokumento o lalong-lalo na ng pera 
kung halimbawang ipapadala natin ito sa diham na nakadres sa mga PO boxes. Dahil ang PO box o post office box ay isang lockable box na matatagpuan sa mga post office. Kaya kung halimbawa magkakaproblema kayo sa mga dokumento, ay hindi nyo ito agad mahahabol dahil hindi nakasaad dito ang legal na address ng kumpanya. Pangwalo, huwag makangpag-ugnayan sa mga ahente ng training centers o travel agencies na nag-aalok ng trabaho sa ibang bansa. Tanging mga lihitimong placement agency lamang ang otorisadong mag-process ng application abroad. From the word itself, Tying training lamang ang maari nilang gawin at mag-asikaso ng mga papel para sa tourism or leisure purposes. Pangsyam, huwag tumanggap ng tourist visa para sa pagtatrabaho sa ibang dagat dahil ang pinahihintulutan lamang ng ating gobyerno ay ang mga working visa para legal na makapagtrabaho abroad. Ang tourist visa ay para lamang sa mga nagnanais na mamasyal sa ibang bansa ng maigising panahon. At ang huli at pinaka-importante sa lahat, huwag makikipag-transaksyon sa fixers. Dahil, imbis na mapabuti, ay baka mas lalo pang mapasama ang inyong application. Kaya ang laging bilin sa atin, maging matalino, huwag magpaloko. So sa ngalan po ng aming butihing alkalde, Mayor Francis Anthony S. Garcia, kasama si Vice Mayor Biakalita Goson, katuwang ang mga sanggol niyang panglunsod members, Marami pong salamat sa pakikinig. Nawa, marami po kayong natutunan. Kaya ako naman po ang inyong kapuso, kapamilya at kapatid. No real version po. Hanggang sa susunod. Alright. Thank you so much, Sir Nariel. So, natawa ako doon sa kapuso, kapatid, kapamilya. Ayan. So, uh, okay. So, guys, if you have questions po for um, Sir Nariel, okay, so you may ask questions po, um, lagay niya lang sa comment box or sa comment section. Okay. So, sir, habang naghihintay po tayo ng questions from audience, um, may question po ako. <laughs> so, uh, so um, when the pandemic hits po, nagkaroon tayo parang, I read somewhere po na yung labor shortage po in the Philippines, parang medyo bumaba or mababa na talaga. Um, gaano po kalaki yung um, affected or which industries po yung mga affected today? And ano po yung mga assurance nyo sa graduating students natin na maraming trabaho na nakalaan para sa kanila? Especially oh, for okay. peso. Mm-hmm. Yes, so, uh, by the way, good morning sa lahat. No? Totoo yung nabanggit mo, no? So, there's a lot of uh, affected uh, employees. Not only employees, but of course, pati yung mga employers, no? Especially those that in the hospitalization management, no? Yung talagang na-affect, no? like mga gyms, spa, salon, no? Uh, especially dito sa amin Subatan, we have been uh, in a community quarantine for so long. No, medyo mas strict pa yung sa amin from imagine from June to until um, October. So no August na ECQ pa kami, bumalik pa kami sa pinak mahigpit na ano na na quarantine protocol. And then sa hanggang sa naging ECQ, and then hanggang sa naging alert level three. So yun medyo ngayon bumababa na. Ang nakikita lang naman natin ngayon, ano, medyo sa ngayon, gumaganda na yung, ano, yung ating um, situation. And uh, unti-unti na nagbubukas ang ating ekonomiya. So most likely, pagka-graduate siguro ng ating mga, ano, ng ating mga estudyante from BPS who would definitely, would have a great, an opportunity, a great opportunity to really look for a job. And uh, wag sila mag-worry dahil talagang siguro lahat apektuhan eh, no? Uh, talagang this pandemic has brought us a lot of uh, suffering no no from our no from from, from uh, I mean emotionally kasama din yun no kaya uh, siguro ang kailangan lang talaga natin a uh, uh, gawin yung mga una nating nakita o narinig sa ating mga ano mga mga speakers no especially sa paggawa ng resume kasi yun ang number one eh no doon kasi yung unang step for you to uh, be able to land an interview Kaya kinakailangan ito palang sa resume, nakikita na na maayos ang iyong pagkakagawa. And uh, rest assured, no, uh, dahil ka sa patuloy na nag-open ang ating economy and hopefully tuloy-tuloy na siya, no. So still, uh, makakakita tayo na magandang, ano, magandang um, uh, opportunity for them once they graduate next. Graduated next. Okay, thank you sir. And of course sir, meron tayong tinatawag na underemployment, tama po ba? Yung ito yung mas less yung hour or hindi tugma yung um yung course mo sa trabaho pinasukan mo. 
Ayan. So, um, is it better, sir, kesa sa wala tayong trabaho today? Or pangit pa rin siyang tingnan um, sa market outlook or sa labor force ng Philippines? Actually, Kasi for the meantime lang naman po, eh, di ba? Oo. Oh, oh, oh. Sa ngayon pa sila, lalo kung very scarce pa yung mga opening, no? Mm-hmm. Lalo kung uh, kakunti pa yung mga job op- uh, offering na ibinibigay, uh, might as well siguro kung ano naman, kung um, kinakailangan talaga natin para makatulong din sa pamilya, why not? And then after that, actually doon naman sa, ano, sa mga ano sa mga trabaho na nakuha natin, eh, we could uh, earn na uh, experience eh. So, hindi lang uh, yung hard skill na tinatawang kinakailangan matutunan. Even the soft skill, pinaka-importante yun. So, while doing that, at least you could, ano, you could have that and those, ano, as your foundation para once you get the interview and you get uh, accepted from a job na talagang gusto mo, at least you have, ano, you have the, ano, the basic basic requirements na, na kailangan. So, hindi naman masama, definitely, yung magkaroon ka ng trabaho. But yun nga lang, if you're going to look at the economic outlook, yung makita ng maraming underemployed and ko continue na uh, ang ano uh, oras ng tinatrabaho nila or they are not fit to the ano the course that they had during their ano their uh, undergrad um, course medyo uh, may konting ano lang konti, definitely it's a very minimal impact to us but still nakaka-contribute pa rin naman sa ating part Mm-hmm. Yes, tama ka yan, sir. So, ayan po. So, um, advice na lang, sir, for the graduating students na worried sa uh, paghahalap ng trabaho ngayong pandemic. Alright. Sa ating mga kasama dyan sa, ano, sa BPS, you know, uh, so, uh, of course, ngayon pa lang, kinukongratulate na namin kayo sa inyong uh, uh, magiging um, graduation. Sana lahat gumaraduate, no? no? Yun lang naman ang uh, prayer natin. And um, don't worry. So, uh, we just need to pray. And of course, we have to follow the uh, government uh directive especially sa health protocol para at least tuloy-tuloy yung ating ano yung yung ating um pagbaba ng kaso especially dito sa bataan nakita niyo naman yung ano yung impact of ano of uh, of the covid cases dito sa atin and um sa patuloy na pagbubukas ng ekonomiya uh we believe na magkakaroon tayo ng magandang trabaho of course with the help of our ano, of our official like governor Abbott, congressman Joe and of course mayor mayor Francis Garcia we are looking for different avenues to really ano, augment the scarcity of job dito sa atin. And especially, hopefully, next year, marami na magbubukas ang establishment. Uh, andyan na, nakikita niyo naman yung, ano, yung mga, mga development sa atin. Like, yung SM, hopefully, andyan na, papasok na. Robert's just been starting to be constructed. And uh, marami na mga BPOs na, uh, na nag-locate uh, na rin sa atin and been looking for, ano, uh, they have been uh, doing the feasibility study. So, dahil maganda ang talent natin, and they're really willing to invest dito sa ating province. So, especially now, no, yung nababalitaan natin, there will be a uh, long bridge ng interconnectivity between the Cavite and Maribeles. So, that would generate a lot of job to bata So, yun lang. Right, so, so, congratulations everyone. So, congratulations po and marami po sa kama. Sir Nuriel, we have question po from the audience. Baka pwede natin ano, pagbigyan. So, from uh, mga educators po at ito, edu- from edu community. So, ang uh, um, question po is, Pwede po ba lumapit sa peso if we are planning to apply sa mga private schools, graduate po ng education? Yes, definitely. Uh, meron naman kaming pool of uh, job vacancies here. So we could refer you and then we could match you. Ang maganda lang sa amin kung halimbawa magbibigay kayo ng resume sa amin or you're going to uh, to uh, put your profile to us, like sa Jobs 180, no? uh, we could, know, we could uh, match you with the proper skills na or yung uh, yung skills na needed ng isang company and then we could refer you to that. All right, thank you so much sir. So ayan guys, uh visit niyo lang po yung peso, okay? So um to award the certificate sir, so before you proceed backstage, okay? So let me read po the citation. So but Anton sa Las State University, may nabukay bagak balanga din lupian Rani. The certificate of appreciation is given to Mr. Nergel Didashon as a key speaker in the pre-employment orientation virtual seminar for his phenomenal and worthy presentation on the topic employment programs and services in the pre-employment preparation talk Feb 2021 for the graduating class of Bataan Peninsula State University organized by BTSU Office of the Student Affairs Job Placement Office in collaboration with Balanga City Public Employment Services Office given this 24th day of November 2021 at Bataan Peninsula State University, Bataan, Philippines. Signed by Dr. Emmanuel C. Macaraeg, Ph.D. Vice President for Academic Affairs, and Dr. Gregorio J. Rodis, Ph.D. the University President. So, thank you so much, Sir Nariel. Thank you so much po for joining us today. Thank you so much.
ingat po. Okay. So, um, for our last topic for today, so we have the, excuse me. <clears throat> Ayan, so we have the Senior Labor Employment Officer for, from Provincial Public Employment Service Office. So, um, she's a graduate of BS Psychology in Colegio de San Juan de Letran, Bataan, 7th, Bataan, 7th place of 2017 Board Licensure Exam for Psychometricians or BLEP and presently a Senior Labor and Employment Officer in the Provincial Public Employment Service Office, Bataan, Ms. Liza E. Concepcion. Good morning, Ms. Liza or Ms. Liza. Good morning to all the graduating Peninsulares from each BPSU campus class 2021 to 2022. I am Lisa E. Concepcion, Senior Labor and Employment Officer from the Public Employment Service Office, Bataan. Earlier, you learned about the online application and interview tips, the top skills employers look for from the resource speakers from Jobs 180, and the labor education from Dole Bataan, and the PESO programs and services from City PESO. So now, let me present the in-demand jobs within the region and within our province to help you make informed plans and decisions based on the existing work opportunities here in Bataan. So first, let me discuss what is Key Employment Generators or KEGS for short. Key employment generators are the major industry groups with the greatest potential to generate employment and absorb bulk of the workforce in the years to come. KEGS are those industry groups that are expected to provide more jobs to our existing active workforce like you. To know the industry drivers and the employment generators, let me give you a background of the region. Region 3 or Central Luzon being the third largest region in the country in terms of population, demography is a key factor in the development of these emerging key employment generators as it accounted 11% of the country's total population. This makes the region an attractive destination for businesses and investors given the ability of a pool of potentially skilled and highly literate workers. Another factor that could help boost these kegs is the region's strategic location. Central Luzon is the home of several special economic zones as it is accessible through the authority of the Freeport area of Bataan, Clark Freeport Zone, and Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority, three of the country's leading international gateways that have globally competitive enterprises given the low cost of doing business and the critical mass of transport infrastructure. Furthermore, its proximity to Manila and National Capital Region allows it to benefit from the spillover of the economic activities of Metro Manila. Given these advantages, here are the projected kegs in a region until 2022. So on your screen, you can see the kegs by region from 2020 to 2022. So you could see that these industries such as wholesale and retail trade, construction, manufacturing, hotel, restaurant and tourism, and agribusiness are the major kegs in Central Luzon. What do you think is the top industry among the kegs? Yeah, you're right. It is the manufacturing sector. This includes the physical or chemical transformation of materials, substances, or components into new products. 
So, this manufacturing sector has been the most vibrant sector in terms of economic activity, gradually becoming a predominant industry due to the influx of various companies establishing their manufacturing plants in the region. As it continues to attract more investments to contribute to the regional economy. Next booming sector is the hotel, restaurant, and tourism industry. This covers tourism related enterprises such as restaurants, food chains, and accommodation establishments that include but not limited to hotels, resorts, apartments, motels, bed and breakfast facilities, yung yung mga nausa sa atin na mga Airbnb, and tourism inns. This also involves operation of tourist transport services, preservation of historical shrines, landmarks, and structures. Moreover, the expansion of the Clark International Airport is a welcome development. An additional terminal for the airport has been approved by NEDA in 2015 aimed to increase the number of local and international flights, in turn increasing the entry of flight passengers in the region. More flights to Clark will essentially produce a ripple effect that gradually boosts economic activities including transportation, food, and other businesses down the line. Next is the construction sector. This covers the putting up of horizontal and vertical construction projects. Horizontal forms of construction involve the operation of heavy equipment to move tons of earth materials in order to complete construction projects such as building, roads, bridges, airfields, etc. Vertical construction, on the other hand, means anything being built from the ground up. Um, for example, cond condominium units and other uh, tall buildings. There are also high-impact projects that are envisioned to increase the productive capacity of the economy, create jobs, increase incomes, and strengthen the investment climate leading to sustained inclusive growth. And next, we have the wholesale and retail trade industry. This covers the wholesale and retail sale of any type of goods and the rendering services incidental to the sale of these goods or its distribution. Next, Key employment generator or KEGS in the region is agribusiness. This industry is generally the commercial aspect related to agriculture or agricultural activities. Agribusiness sector is engaged in the production and operations of a farm, the manufacture and the distribution of farm equipment and supplies, and the processing, storage, and distribution of farm commodities. As a whole, the agribusiness sector is quite diverse as it encompasses input production, farm operations and management, equipment and supplies manufacturing, food and non-food processing trading, and retailing. Next booming keg is the IT, BPM, or the Information Technology Business Processing Management. This covers voice or call center and non-voice IT software complex services which include subsectors in the call center. Knowledge processing outsourcing or KPO, data transcription, animation, digital content or game development, software development and engineering development. IT BPM service exports have immensely increased and will continue to be strong for the next years. And did you know that Clark has been identified by an international investment advisory firm as one of the top 100 BPO destinations worldwide? It was estimated that BPOs based in Clark can draw 
from more than 60,000 new graduates coming from the different colleges and universities in the region every year. And the BPO industry is steadily becoming a major employment generator. Given the current situation, another keg in the region is the health and wellness industry. It covers the establishment and operation of medical facilities such as primary, secondary, and tertiary hospitals, ambulatory clinics, and spas that cater to the overall well-being of a person. This includes the operation of hotel spa, therapeutic center, traditional and alternative healing and medical care services. And last, one of the booming kegs also in the region is the transport and logistics. Transport covers air, water, and mass rail transport, while logistics covers the development and operation of airports, seaports, passengers, intermodal terminals, cargo terminals, container yards, and warehouses. Logistics also deals with the aspects of procurement, maintenance and transportation of facilities, and personal safety from one place to another. Now that you've learned about the kegs in Central Luzon, are you excited to know more about the top job vacancies in the province? So. Let's zoom in and find out. But first, let me give you an introduction on the industry drivers or what we call engines of growth here in Bataan. On your screen, you could see the map of Bataan. In Marveles, we have the FAB or the Freeport area of Bataan. While in Limay, we have the Philippine National Oil Company or Pino. We also have the DND Arsenal. And in the first district, Hermosa, we also have the Hermosa Ecozone Industrial Park. So given these that we are very fortunate to have ecozones in the province, let's see what are the key employment generators in Bataan. Given such industry drivers in the province, can you guess the top key employment generators here in Bataan? So on your screen, you could see the top kegs in the province ranked from the highest to lowest potential of generating employment. So consistent with the regional reports, the top keg in Bataan is the manufacturing industry, followed by the wholesale and retail trade. Next is electricity, oil and gas, and the ITBPM then construction, health, and last is the banking and finance industry. So now that you know about the kegs in the province, let's discuss the top job vacancies per industry here in the province. So shown on your screen are the top job vacancies under the manufacturing industry solicited by the provincial PESO from the Eco Zones in Mariveles, the Freeport area of Bataan, and in Hermosa, the Hermosa Eco Zone Industrial Park, and also from the SBMA. So first on our list is sower. Marami po talaga tayong uh, hinahanap na sowers dito sa province, especially po sa AFAB. No? So if you know someone no, um, that would be interested to apply, for sowers, marami pong hinahanap. Around 500 to 1,000 job vacancies are waiting for them. So next is stable works, production operators, another in demand under manufacturing industry, and the stitcher or sower, quality controller, line helper, QC inspector, warehouseman, Printing helper or helper in general, cementer, QMR or DC officer, RF operator, tent sample solver, manual attacher, 
technical staff, anodizing operator, company nurse, machine, of, machine operator, TPC staff, assembler or reservoir frame inserter, laminator, line leader, QA production, RF sewer, rod bending operator, finishing carpenter, molding machine operator, sewing, cutting, marker, assorter, and operator, and last is a side cutter or burning. So these are the top job vacancies under manufacturing industry. Next to manufacturing industry is the wholesale and retail trade. And here are the job vacancies. First is the medical sales representatives, followed by mason or tile setter. Next is plumber and aircon technician and HR recruitment personnel and purchasing staff. So you would notice that although we are talking about the wholesale and retail trade, there are job vacancies that are related to manufacturing industry. That is because these job vacancies are also required by companies or employers categorized under the wholesale and retail trade industry. Next top keg is the electricity, oil, and gas. Since there are existing oil refineries and oil companies here in the province, here are their top job vacancies. First is lineman or erector, followed by senior accounting officer. They are also looking for accounting assistants, drivers, first aiders, permit row coordinator, project nurse, and utility or maintenance. Next is the ITBTM or the four top keg in Bataan. So aside from the call centers in Clark and SBMA, there are also local call centers in Mariveles, Bataan. And they are looking for bi or multilingual call center agents, collection specialists, local collections agent, and web content officers. And for our top five keg, we have the construction industry. And they are looking for masons, carpenters, steel men, helpers, front desk officers, company nurses, HR representatives, and procurement officers. As we are determined to achieve herd immunity, the health industry is now one of the top kegs in the province. And here are the top job vacancies under the health industry. They are looking for nurses, medical officers, midwives, nursing attendants, and medical technologists. And for the last keg, we have the banking and finance industry. And here are their top job vacancies. They are looking for accounting staff, audit staff, financial analyst, accounting assistant, general accountant, junior accounting staff, and senior accounting staff. So there you go. I hope you learned a lot about the labor market trends here in Bataan. And these are just few of the opportunities we have here in the province. And we are looking forward for more as our government recovery strategies are being developed, focusing on gradually reopening and stimulating the economy, stemming from the spread of the virus and creating jobs. The implementation of these strategies will influence the outlook and growth of key industries, including the skills that will be relevant and the number and the nature of jobs that will be generated. As explained, the same will also continue to dictate the future labor market landscape for the new and better normal. So if you have questions, please contact us at our Facebook account, Peso Capital Bataan. And if you are interested in the job vacancies in Freeport area of Bataan, you could like and follow their page, AFAB Labor Center, and the SBMA Labor Department if you are also interested to check out the job vacancies in SBMA. 
and the Clark Cares page for the job vacancies in Clark Freeport Zone. And you could also go to our local job portal, the Hot Jobs Bataan. You just search www.hotjobsbataan.com and you could see the latest job vacancies here in Bataan. And we also have the Peso Call Center. Flash on your screen are the job search hotlines that you could call to register your skills for job matching and referrals. So there you go. On behalf of the Provincial Public Employment Service Office and our PESO manager, Mr. Melcher Aikley, I would like to congratulate each one of you and we wish you all the best on your careers. Again, congratulations to graduating class 2021 to 2022. Stay safe and God bless everyone. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Liza. So do we have Ms. Liza? Can we have Ms. Liza for the guinea? Ayan. Hi, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, you can open your camera po, ah. Hi, Ms. Liza. Ayan, so connecting siya with uh, to device. I think Mary lang siya. Ayan. Hi, ma'am. Good, good afternoon. It's already afternoon. I'm um, nakamute kayo, ma'am. Hello, good noon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Hello ma to Ooh. all the. Oh. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, so good afternoon. Yes, po. Hello to all the peninsulares. I think my feedback mam din sa isang device. Parang late siya dumadating sa'yo. Can you hear me po? Can you hear me now, ma'am? Medyo lag lang po siya. Ayan. So, guys, sabi nila natin si Miss Liza. If you have questions, you may post it or um put it on the comment section, okay? So, you may also visit po the Facebook page mentioned by Miss Liza. Um, for um, openings and vacancies po ng peso. Yeah. Hi, Ms. Liza. Can you hear me now? Ayan. Hello. Uh, narinig po ako? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you po. Ayan po. Ayan. Great. So, ma'am, I have questions lang. So, um, since um, you have limited time po, so, ito, so, one moment. So, um, what would be po your advice for the graduating students as they prepare po to join our workforce? Um, ayan po. Ngayon po na nabanggit ni Sir Noriel earlier, um, just follow po yung mga tips po na ating mga speakers. And we encourage po everyone to just continue no, continue exploring uh, other career or yung, syempre po, prefer preferably yung inyong napagtaposan na course. No, so, um, although sa ngayon, um, medyo may kakulangan pa po sa mga job vacancies na available, but good news is, Unti-unti na pong nagre-recover po ang ating economy. Now, we are already on alert level 2. No? The businesses are slow, are opening na po ngayon. So, magandang balita po yan sa ating mga workers. No? Kaya ang payo lang po namin is, for the meantime, if uh, you have time then try to enhance or develop your personal skills, your hard and soft skills, no? para po when the right opportunity comes, you're ready na po to take and perform yung in yung duties and job duties, no? So, yun lamang po, tuloy lang po, uh, kasi sa ngayon, talagang maraming naghahanap ng trabaho. We have to make sure na 
yung meron tayong edge din through trainings no na na inattend natin and meron tayong mga special skills to offer so ayun i hope you learned a lot from the speakers din po from jobs 180 and of course from dole and to and from the city peso sir noriel and from me po from the provincial peso bataan uh, yun lamang po ang mga available po ngayon but I suggest na you explore more no sa aming you just search for the Peso Capital Bataan Facebook account and the uh, Facebook page ng SBMA SBMA Labor Department and the Clark Cares no so very we're very fortunate po na malapit lang tayo we're, na malapit lang po ang Bataan dito sa mga eco zones sa SBMA and Clark na marami pong job opportunities. So, just explore and jumpstart your careers. Yun lamang po. Thank you very much po for inviting me. Ayan, and so much, stay safe po. God bless everyone. Uh, Ms. Liza, if ever po um, may mga students po na gusto mag-walk in, um, open po ba si Peso? Ayan. Medyo late lang po. <laughs> so I need to repeat the question, ma'am. Okay. So, um, in case, ah, yes, ma'am. So, in case, ma'am, na meron pong mga students na um, gusto mag-walk in po, um, mag-visit po sa inyong office, uh, open naman po ba ngayon? Um, sa ngayon po, uh, we suggest to explore muna po online para po hindi rin po sila um, ma-expose no sa mm -hmm. virus so we uh, encourage them to check online first para po uh, doon anytime po kasi may bagong dating na mm -hmm. mga job vacancies no baka po pagpunta nila wala pa but the next time baka meron na pong fit para po sa kanilang skills and uh, uh, course So, we suggest na mag-check muna po online through our local job portal, www.hotjobsbataan.com. Uh, uh, sa ngayon po, um, dahil nga po pandemic, restricted din or limited din ang ating mobility. So, um, yung mga employers po, talaga, they prefer yung online applications. You know? yeah. Para po anytime, they could also address or reply to your applications po. Ayun po. Yes. Thank you po. Thank you so much, Ms. Liza. Okay, so to award the certificate po, so let me read po the citation. So, um, Bataan Peninsula State University, May Nabukay, Bagak, Balanga, Dinalupihan, Orani, certificate of appreciation is given to Ms. Liza E. Concepcion as a key speaker in the pre-employment orientation um, virtual seminar for her phenomenal and worthy presentation on the topic labor market outlook in the pre-employment preparation talk PEP 2021 for the graduating task of Pataan Peninsula State University organized by BPSU Office of the Student Affairs Job Placement Office in collaboration with Bataan Provincial Public Employment Service Office given this 24th day of November 2021 at Pataan Peninsula State University, Pataan, Philippines. Signed by Dr. Emmanuel C. Macaraeg, PhD, Vice President for Academic Affairs, and Dr. Gregorio J. Rodis, PhD, University President. So, virtual clap naman po for uh, Ms. Liza and to all our speakers. So, maraming maraming salamat po, Ms. Liza, for joining us today. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much din po. And again, congratulations po to all the graduating peninsulares. God bless po. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So um, to officially close our program for today, may we invite Dr. Renel De La Rosa, um, OSES Director, for the closing remarks. Good afternoon to all, um, to our University President, um, Dr. Gregory Rodes, our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Emmanuel Macaraeg, And to all the stakeholders, speakers, esteemed speakers, guests, students, faculty members, deans, and university officials, magandang magandang uh, hapon po sa lahat. Uh, uh, ako po'y lubos na nagpapasalamat uh, sa, 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 sa uh, academic event na ito. To all the graduating class, uh, congratulations in advance. 
this academic event is a great pull moment to consider with the initiative of our placement office headed by Ma'am Hazel. Congratulations for the, for the success of this event and to your staff as well. Um, this venture of undertaking is a initial milestone of what you're going to achieve in the future because uh, pre-employment uh, activities and, uh, and works are very relevant and vital to what direction you will going to have in your career. And I hope you learn something. You will learn and learn something uh, about this academic engagement. And I also believe that without your courage and patience of pursuing your education, you will not be able to come up with the stage. And you've gone so far at this moment. So in behalf of Bataan Peninsula State University, Office of Student Affairs and Services, we would like to congratulate everyone for succeeding this academic event. And hopefully, you will be succeeding in your own dreams and journey of your professional career. Mabuhay ang mga peninsulares. Maraming maraming salamat. All right, thank you so much, um, Dr. Renel De La Rosa, the OSS director. Po. All right, so um, before you guys leave, we will be flashing for quick long slides from government agencies. So these are the pre-employment requirements that you need to secure po, so where and how to secure um, this um, pre-emp requirements po from government agencies. So we have NBI, Pag-ibig Test, that will have PTI, SSS, BIR. Okay, so um, quick um, flashing lang ng slides. So we have NBI, ayan. And if you are guys um, interested na magkaroon ng copy nito, you may um, ask Miss Hazel po um, the pre, I'm sorry, the um, placement office. Okay, so you may ask Miss Hazel. And then, pwede nyo pong balikan ito, itong ating um, session. So you may visit uh, Jobs 180 Facebook page or YouTube page. So ayan, ma'am. So next po. Ayan, so this uh, steps po from NBI ito. Ayan, so ito, NBI. Paano magkaroon ng clearance? NBI clearance. Okay, so next po, we have um from Pag-ibig. Okay, hindi hinahanap ang Pag-ibig. <laughs> nag apply para sa Pag-ibig. Okay, so ito. Next po, ayan. So we have saving, short-term loan, kung gusto niya mag-loan. Ayan, so sa pag-ibig. Okay, next po. Okay, so you may also um contact pag-ibig uh, fund official uh, page. Next, ma'am. Okay, so also have PhilHealth. Okay. Ayan. Lahat ba may PhilHealth ano na, IDs? Ayan, so next po. Okay. All right. So also have from BTI. Okay, so how to register or where to register, guys? For um, sino yung mga gusto mag um put ng business? So kailangan magkaroon ng BTI um, forms clearance and so next po. Okay, so SSS. Hi. Again, uh, for those um, students po na gustong magkaroon ng copy ng mga um, forms na ito or slides, okay, so you may ask Ms. Hazel or Ms. Fatima po ng VPSP. Okay. So, TIN or DIR. Next, ma'am. Alright. Next po. Okay, so TESDA, ito sinabi kanina ni Sir Noriel na merong uh, mga companies na naghahanap ng TESDA certificate. Okay, so paano maging certifi uh, certified worker? So, di ba? So, data nag-release sa TESDA ng mga um, certificate. <clears throat> okay, next po. And then, um... I think last na po ata si Testa. Alright. Okay. Next step. Okay. So, yun po. So, again, um, you may ask Miss Hazel or Miss Fatima 
Fatima po for the copy of slides. Okay, so um, to evaluate this event po, you may um, visit or you may um, naka-flash po yan sa inyong screen and also will be available in the comment section. So please do not forget to evaluate this event kasi this will be one of your attendance. Yung isa yung sa pre-reg link ni Drops 180 and then um, second itong evaluation link from BPSU. So um, important rin itong evaluation from BPSU. So don't forget to evaluate this event guys. Okay? So if you didn't have any questions, this is where we end our program. So we would like to thank each one of you guys for staying all throughout the event. And we would like to thank especially Ms. Hazel Elaya and Ms. Fatima and her team po, BPSU Office of Student Affairs and Job Placement Office. And of course, the whole BPSU um, campus for collaborating again with Jobs 180. We would like to thank also the following sponsors po. So we have the XI Optum CEO. Um, if Mary can you mention so for being our um corporate sponsors po you may check out um their page for career opportunities or you may visit jobs180.com po for career opportunities and kung gusto niyo pong balikan ang ating session for today you may rewatch it at jobs180 Facebook and jobs180 YouTube page so please watch out for the next set of webinars we are going to host for so we have discussed po event on uh, Friday and you so please check our Facebook page for the topics that will be discussed and you are Welcome, guys, to join in on those sessions too. So, see you and have a great afternoon, BTSU. Ingat po! The clinical trial market as we know it is about to change. We're revolutionizing the current state aligned to disparate, slow, and often manual processes. Optum's vision is to transform the drug development process to one that is centered and grounded in real-world patient behavior and physician practice. Optum's ability to access this unique network and fold in the strongest data and analytics expertise will enable us to jointly bring life-saving drugs to the patients who need it most. Join us in this partnership to bring our shared vision for real-time, real-world healthcare research for real patients.